it's nine o'clock, I've got a business to run. I'll tell you one thing, Alan Bradley. What's that? You're very adaptable. <laughs> what happened? Well, now, how can I put it? Let's just say you waste no time in making yourself at home. In the nicest possible way, I hasten to add. Well, that depends, doesn't it? Well, I'm not moaning. I'm adaptable, too. Well, it looks as though I've fallen on my feet again. Could be. Only don't just hop it one fine morning, will you? You're joking. As if I would. I'm not joking. I'm not daft, either. Rita's made a move, hasn't she? Uh, she's been to see me, yeah. And she wants you back, right? Wrong. Oh, come on, Alan. Don't tell me she's just letting you go. It's bad for the old ego, but that's the message I got. It's like I told you. She's all wrapped up in herself. And as hard as nails with it. Oh, jealousy. No cat calling. No. It's all down to money. What, maintenance or something? She wants the yard back. She wants the car back as well. She wants half of my bank balance and three pints of my blood, I shouldn't wonder. See, the general idea is that I end up ruined. She's going to have to whistle up the next street. That's what my ex tried. But I didn't do too bad. Mm. I'm not married to Reed. Well, does that make a lot of difference these days? Oh, don't rush off. There's more coffee in the pot. Time for some more toast. I might not have you for long. Right, I've paid my papers. I don't want a knitting pattern house things. Fantastic. Playing a blinder. Alan's back, is he? The dirty dog. Hogging the bed, pinching the top off the milk. He's back. He'll not be back. Not that right on the head. Oh, you've seen him, have you? Toe-to-toe -to -toe stuff. Oh, yeah. Dished it out. Don't you worry. Well, if you told him a few home truths, can't be bad. Oh, I did. I did my hard as nails act. Told him the cold facts of life in hard cash. Who owns what? Well, good on you. Can't be bad letting him know which side his bread's buttered. No, bad. I did it all wrong. He never said die, love. He'll do his sums and come trotting back. Would I want him back on them terms? Not that I expect to get the chance, not the way I've marked his card. He'll have me down as a right hard-faced cow. A money-grabbing bitch who's written him off and just wants to salvage what brass she can from the wreck. And if he thinks I've written him off, he'll write me off. He's already got this other woman, Carol Burns, driving around in a car my money paid for. If he's not living with her now, he soon will be. No bet. I might win a few battles on the way, but I've lost the war. We've been here before. This way. I've lost track. Hello. It was the first we tried. Three blessed hours ago. We saw a dress you actually liked, but you didn't want to plunge. You've tried 50 cents in at least six different shops. It's just got to be a right. It's a sort of smoky peach colour. Now, where was it? Back again, are we? The smoky peach, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. I wish I had your memory. For a wedding, wasn't it? Civil ceremony? Yes. You thought I was a guest. That's right, yes. That's how I remember something that said... Mind you, if your hips were ginormous or you had a wooden leg, I'd remember that, too. <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? It was the smoky peach. That was the one. Yes, I wasn't all that struck. Oh, it suited you, madam. I said, didn't I? You'll upstage the bride in that little belter. You said I am the bride. <laughs> we had a right laugh over that in the stockroom. Carl seemed to find it. Oh, you won't, love. I've sold it not ten minutes since. You see, class, at that price, you have to pounce. Oh, goodness. I feel fated. Don't you fret, love. You've got all afternoon. And failing that with some lovely gear coming in next week. But I'm getting married next week. Oh, well, you can always postpone it. Uh, what I wouldn't give for a pint. Oh, I must be really thirsty <coughs> work driving Baldwin's jag. <laughs> Not just his driver, you know. I do have other responsibilities. Oh, I what like? Saying gesundheit every time he sneezes. Oh, listen to Gopher here. I've heard you never know where your boss is. Oh, that's right. Mind you, I can generally tell by his shoes. If he comes in crepes holes, I'm watching shop on me, Todd. <laughs> you talking about Alan Bradley? Oh, yeah. Who else do I work for? How can he run that business with all that emotional turmoil? That's what gets me. I mean, aren't you worried about your prospects and so on? Well, of course I am. What can he do except turn up and show Willie? <laughs> Top of the morning, usually, is it? Yes, please, darling. Better get yeah. Okay, darling. Yeah, that driver of mine is not hitting the hard stuff, is he? No, he's as good as gold. He's a character, he is. He's only been on the firm five minutes, he starts cracking the whip. I told him, take it easy. Learn the ropes. What ropes? Come clean, Michael. You want the rubbing rag? Hello, Alan. 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 Hello, Alan.
Hello, Alan. Quite Hello. a stranger. Am I you. Have you, though? Just get up a pint, please, Ben. Right? That's all right. <coughs> oh, by the way, that bit of business we did. Send the bill in, will you? Oh, yeah, sure. Seen anything of Rita lately? Are in the cabin this morning. Oh, she's open for business, then. Thought she might be too busy seeing a solicitor. Drastic, isn't it? Oh, you believe it. She's sucking me out the yard, you know. And laying claim to every penny I've got. And no wonder. Well, I don't understand it, me. I mean, me and Rita have a row, right? I walk out, I think, right, give it a week or two, it'll all blow over. Suddenly, it's total war, the Iron Curtain. Almost as though she'd been waiting her chance. Give over, Alan, you've ditched her for another woman, a younger woman. Rita's got her pride. All right, so I've seen another woman. It was a bit naughty, all right, but it wasn't serious. I mean, if Rita had said to me, pack it in or else, I would have done. She didn't. You know, since we broke up, she's been like steel. Oh, come on, Sunshine, grow up. I mean, have you, have you said you're sorry? Have you apologised? <laughs> well, you are with this other woman, aren't you? Who says so? Well, nobody, but it figures, doesn't it? I mean, it's bound to bugger. You working in her yard, earning money for this other woman. Well, she can have the yard. I won't be needing it much longer. I'm on the lookout for a shop, you know. Going into the retail side of the business. Oh, well, if you've got it all covered, you'll have Yeah, you? but it's not just <clears> the premises, is it? It's the finances and all that. And if Rita goes here with this, suing me for this money I'm supposed to owe, well, well, it's going to be a bit difficult. So, go down on your knees and move back in. Be off, will you? Well, I thought you said you were just waiting for the work. What, on her terms? Well, it's no skin off mine, no sunshine, but I'll tell you this. If you are living with this other woman, it's about time you were. You can't keep it a secret. And once Rita finds out for sure, well, it's you and her not to mention your financial standing right out the window. Hi. Hello, Doc. Is it Mavis and Emily anywhere? Oh, I've just chucked them out. You know, usual performance, fighting and swearing. Taking the notes as well. She goes like that sometimes. It's something to do with the moon. You know. I'll have half a lager while I'm waiting. I'll do as arrangements, love. No, they said they were coming in here for a bite. They've been uptown, you see, buying the wedding dress. Oh, hey, eh? Emily's taking some of Tom, aren't she? <laughs> no, it may be. This is another tough place, that wedding. I'll lay odds. Oh, aye. What are you betting? I'll bet you're a microwave. Brand new. I'll even stick a pie in it for you. It'll be the one that Peter got for the money for his injuries. He bet it against Ark will come his second to a donkey. Well, I'd take you on, but from what I've seen of Mavis this last few days, I've an awful feeling you might win. Believe me, Mavis, that looks fine. Don't you think it looks fine? I thought it looked fine half an hour ago. <laughs> well, it's not how it looks, it's how it feels. Well, stop dithering and try it on, for heaven's sake. I've tried it on. I know that it fits. It, it's how it feels. You keep saying that. Well, you keep saying, try it on, try it on. I, I've tried on the whole shop. I'm beginning to perspire. Don't give up now. Just think of Gypsy Rose Lee. Well, OK, I'm sorry. You've been ever so helpful. Oh, I'm beginning to wonder if it's all worthwhile. You said a new outfit was vital, Mavis. I'm not talking about the outfit. I'm... Oh, well. <laughs> Once more, I'm through the breach. Oh, it's murder, isn't it? But she's right, you know. You have to feel right. Well, I suppose so. It's all in the mind, isn't it? I've had other customers haven't felt right, you know. I had one in not a week back. Can I change this garment? It was a wedding dress. I said, how did it go? She said, I stood him up. It's not the dress, you see, it's the man. Oh, yes, it has to feel right. Well, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> Hey, Jack, I've been checking up. That's a load of rubbish you told me about Mrs. Pierce and Percy Sugden. Hey, no, enough of it. I want no fights, and I've got a shotgun under this bar, you know. It led to some hard words. I'm a jealous man, you see. I'm, I'm sorry, out time. It was only a joke. Do you, do you fancy a drink, me? Mind you, I won't have another fella's leavings. I don't think Phyllis has ever been left. She's been died on, yes, but never left. That'd take a brave man. I hear a Sugden a spurn, though. Oh, he's up to all sorts, Sugden, isn't he? Mind you, he never could have good women. We lined up a couple of birds at bowling club, ladies' night final. We were on a good end. Jack Edders, no danger. 
Would he make a move? Yeah, he's all talking. I mean, what he didn't do when he was down catching, when he was king of the kill cows, eh? If I see a woman I fancy, I'm in there. It's all action. Once I've had a think, weighed it all off, know her background, got the picture, slept on it, run it through the computer. I can't be doing with people that hesitate and mess about. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jack? <clears throat> oh, excuse me, uh, has Mavis been in? Oh, everybody's after Mavis today. No, not unless she started disguising herself. Thank the Lord for that. I was supposed to meet her, got delayed. Panic stations, really. It's little letdowns of this kind, on the eve of the great day, so to speak, can be got out of proportion. I thought she might have got fed up and gone to Peru. <laughs> Derek, thank heaven you're still here. He's only just come. Oh, well, anyway, apologies from Mavis. She's had to shoot off to the cabin. We've had a terrible time trying to get her fixed up. But she's finally settled on something I think you'll approve of. I know, steady on, steady on. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Could be frightful bad luck. Surely it's seeing her in it before the day. Yeah, but we can't be too careful. Already the omens are not good. Oh, for goodness sake, Derek, don't start that. Try and be sensible. Excuse me, does anybody want to drink? I should have get back to my knitting. Well, I don't know about Derek, but I'm parched. A bit of lemon would go down very well. Oh, well, allow me. <laughs> bit of lemon and uh, half a bitter, please. Oh, thank you. You know, it's easy to scorn, and I'm not a great believer in the occult, but there's this woman at work who reads tea leaves. Now, she took one look at my teacup this morning and advised me to wait a full year before marrying. That's a full year after the divorce. But you left Angela ages ago. Ah, yes, but it's not the separation that's significant. It's the divorce that's powerful. And in terms of my actual, real, final divorce, well, it's hardly a week. Keep the change. Thank you. Arnie, you want the real lowdown on Percy Sutton? That's the woman who lives right there. I know. Not a patch on Mrs. Pierce, though. You reckon? Or is it the light? I suppose I could fancy her. Or maybe not. Well, she's there for taking. I mean, you could make a right monkey out of something. Oh, don't you worry. If I see out I fancy, <laughs> I might like it. Oh, I can say that. Do you, do you fancy a drink? Oh, I don't know. How's the mild? Same as always. Wet. Gives you wind, you know. This bit is right off. Your bottle stuff, it's too expensive. Sometimes they have a short. But then again, you see, I'm very quick to make the plunge. A lot of people say it's my main fault. I know it's going to look all wrong on the day. Just shown it to Harriet. Not a peep, not a flutter. I do wish you'd been with me, Rita. Emily's so indecisive and she's got such conservative taste. Now, look, calm down. We don't want hysterics. I haven't the strength to give you a slap. Where were you? I beg your pardon? One o'clock, we said, comes half past, no sign. Then Emily turns up. Hardly a happy omen, Mavis. Oh, Derek, please, no niggling, if you don't mind. No ominous portents. Is, is that the same as a gypsy's warning? <sighs> what we've got to do is think positively. We have to look for the bluebird, the rainbow. Oh, well, can I take it your shopping expedition was successful? Oh, it was dire. It was horrendous. I've been pressured. And I, I've returned with a totally unsuitable garment. But I shall rise above these mishaps. Of course, absolutely. Even though the whole world seems in conspiracy. I don't know. I thought your wedding arrangements were well in hand. No, not exactly. I mean, there's the witness. I went to Alan and he turned me down. Derek. Sorry. You went to Alan? Yeah, Mavis asked me to. Witness. Witness. You sound like Rumpole to the baby. I've got to do something and there isn't much time. Yes, well, you won't do anything, will you? Standing there, putting your foot in it. I walked under a ladder coming here, just didn't see it. Oh, Derek, will you please go? I'll call you. And if you fall over a black cat, I'll see a four-leaf clover. I don't want to know. I'm sorry, Rita. I just thought if Alan came to the wedding... He... That's all right, love. Well, thanks for trying. Look, you just get yourself wed. Don't worry about my bust-ups. Right now, I could kill Derek, let alone wed him. I'll go and put the kettle on. Right. Oh, have you got one, love? Yeah, it'll have to be strong stuff to beat what goes on round here. Oh, I bet will like that. I were hoping to get you on your own. Why? Oh, I've got a message, you see. 
you see, I was round at the Rovers just now uh, for me money and Bet asked me to pop in here. I see. Well, she were going to come round herself, but she's busy, what, with these new hours and Gloria being off. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, she said to tell you Alan were in this dinner and he asked about you. Oh, did he? And that he reckons he's had a rough deal and that he's misunderstood. Misunderstood? Well, well that's what Bet said. Okay, I'll give you a ring sometime next week, I'll Okay, yeah. Bye now. Ah, uh, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I just thought I'd surprise you. See you in your little empire. Oh, uh, well, you better make the most of it, because I might not be here much longer. When, uh, when I get the new shop, how does uh, Head of Sales grab you? Eh? Oh, sounds fine. What would I be selling? Oh, no security gear, the full range. Martin's not clocking us, is he? No, he seemed pretty busy enough when I came through. Why? What did you have in mind? <laughs> well, nothing at the moment, but... Uh... I could finish early for once, couldn't I? Mm -hmm. Bradley Securities. Yes, speaking. Oh, hi. Yeah. Uh, well, that sounds great. Um, where is it? Yeah. When can I have a look at it? Okay. Well, listen, I'll pick the key up on my way home and uh, go and have a look at it tonight. Yeah. Okay. And uh, thanks for ringing. Bye now. More business, eh? Uh, no, um, that was an agency. They, uh, they find flats for people. Oh. I rang them earlier on and... Uh, yes, I heard. Good. Will you take it? I think it's for the best, love. You could stay, you know. Yes, I know I could, but with Rita playing up, I feel that uh, I need to be on my own for a while. It's all to do with money, isn't it, Alan? Of course it is. Like I told you, the yard money I'm supposed to add off her. But it's not going to work, you know. And when she realises that, she's going to try something else to get back at me. What well, letter? Who cares? I care. And I care about you. And I don't want you being dragged into it, okay? I mean, nothing's changing. We'll still go on seeing each other. Nothing's finishing. But, um... Well, look, let's face it. I mean, me turning up on your doorstep like that, that was... Skipping a few stages, wasn't it? Well, yeah. it was then, but I mean, things have been different since, and it's okay. You're right. No sense in rushing things. So, uh, you'll be home early for tea then, will you? Um, I will, yes. All right. I'll see you later then. Mm. Bye. Tirana. That person is so dudens, he's fuddled. I mean, if he lived at my house, I'd show him what was what. Am I just a tool then to rouse his jealousy? Is that it? Don't be cheeky. Mona Lisa had a secret, so do I. Mona Lisa? That's not her in gas showroom, is it? No, she's a picture. Oh, well, her in gas showroom's no picture. And you, there's something about the way she looks at you. Oh, stop yattering on Arnold. Do you want a date with me or not? Oh, I have. Well, uh, yes. Well, where shall we meet then? Oh, well, now there's the, uh, there's the bowling club. Oh, I don't go there. There's a fella there. He's crazy about me. Oh. Well, let's see now. There's the uh, tea dance at the town hall. Or better still, there's a mystery coach trip. But I don't know where it's going to. Another sparkling day down the tubes. Ah, you're a good one. I'm whacked. I've been on my own all morning in the shop, so uh, I'll let Mavis do it. Has she got a bridle array? Something restrained like her? Or has she gone for lorex with sequins? Oh, I've not had a viewing. She's popping round tonight. But I gather there was nearly tears. Oh, she's not falling apart. Hey, she won't do a bunk again, will she? Well, she can please herself. At least I wouldn't have to be there painting a smile on. Go on with you. You'll enjoy it once you get in the mood. No, look, no, it's going to be an ordeal. I mean, a wedding. That's really taking some stick. I don't know which will be worse. Alan being there or him not being there. And if he's there, I'm sure he's Oh, gonna... I know, he'll fall into my arms. Might bring his lady love. Hey, now, even my dad's not that thick. Why not? Why shouldn't he? The invitation's Alan Bradley and guest. What was I that she isn't? He lives with her, doesn't he? Not according to Martin. Oh? Uh -huh. Hmm? I've just seen him in the tippy just now. He reckons me dad's getting a flat. Yeah, 
somewhere um, out in Pendleton. Yeah. He's been in the bed sit and now he's getting his own flat. And he's miserable as sin. All on his own, he's a manky little flat. OK, yeah. So the cast not doing as well as it did, but the drivers don't use it the same. Still ticking over, though. In any case, right? Even if trade is down, it's no skin of Gail's nose. Yet there she is, making work for the soul, setting this signing game up. <laughs> it's all of her own back, you know, not a penny extra. And where's the boss? Mrs. Sedgwick Elmer. Sunning herself in flame in Spain. Anyway, best get going. I might think I've been ambushed. <laughs> Sir, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was quite a speech. He should be on the council. <laughs> I'll say one thing, uh, she's a fine sight, is that young lass peddling that bike? She got my crossing salute and there's not many, get it? Yeah, I'll second that. Hats off to the spirit of youth. Oh, oh hello, Emily. I'm glad Hi. I found you. Come on round and Tracy said he'd nipped out for a drink. Oh, and well, we told her we were going to church. <laughs> I thought you'd be at Rita's with a mouthful of pins. Oh, yes, uh, I was afraid going. Uh, my treat, Mr. Bishop. Sweet cherry, is oh, it? Oh, thank you. Sweet cherry, please. Uh, no last minute pictures, I hope. I mean, uh, looking at Derry. Pete's saying a man poised the flight. He actually turned off. We were fitting the dress and he came knocking at the door. We had to practically drive him away. Oh, then, Mary Ellen, what's that crap hot thinking about? Mavis in the state she's in, that would have just about put the tin lid on things. Yeah, I know. And earlier on, he was Adam. And he wouldn't even have the words wedding dress mentioned. Has anybody spoken to him? I mean, does he sound rational? I'll have a word with you like, Mrs. Bishop, see if he's up to snuff. No, perhaps not. Maybe I'm being a bit silly. But I do get the feeling he's determined on some kind of unconscious sabotage. And if that doesn't work, well, you've said it, Ken. Flight. <coughs> Maybe somebody should have known it down. I can't. I mean, I'll have my work cut out keeping Mavis in order. Oh, well, you'll be looking for a volunteer then, won't you? Pardon? Well, the solution's staring you straight in the face, me. Oh, I'm a dab under Tesco on duty. I've been detailed to watch men that were due to go before the firing squad. And believe me, them men were there. And what's more, they went to that wall with a smile on their face. Yeah, a relief now, yeah. Oh, yes, have no fear. I'll, uh, I'll watch uh, Mr. Wilton. I'll stick to that lad. He'll be there on the dot. I'll stick to him like a leech. I'll never let him out my sight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, can I have a word with you, please? What was all that giggling and whispering about? Nothing. Oh, you usually laugh at nothing, do you? Well, nothing, honestly. You were laughing at me, weren't you? No. Oh, yes, you were. You were only Parky acting daft, you know him. Well, what did he say? What did he say, Jason? He said you'd hide security code to make sure Mr. Wilton turned up at wedding tomorrow. It was only a joke. I have to be going. Morning, Jason. Morning. Morning. Something wrong? No. There is. There isn't, maybe. Oh, it's Jason and the others. What about them? Well, they're making jokes about me and tomorrow. Oh, it is going to be all right this time, isn't it, Reed? I couldn't bear it if it went wrong. Nothing's going to go wrong. Well, it went wrong last time. Well, not this time it won't. You're getting married tomorrow, Mavis, and only a thunderbolt, an earthquake, or a piano dropping on your head will stop it. Right? Now think beautiful thoughts, like the ring sliding on your finger. All right. Right. I'm off, Mr. Sugden. I've been thinking, Mrs. Bishop. I really must be going. Lots to do. It might be as well if I put Mr. Wilton under close arrest today. What do you think? Uh, no, Mr. Sugden, definitely not. Be quite soon enough to start, well, keeping an eye on oh, him. Oh, it, it'll have to be more than that. If I'm going to make sure he turns up at that register office, it'll have to be escort duty at least. Yes, and whatever you call it, tomorrow morning is quite soon enough to start. All right, if you say so. I most certainly do. It's leaving it late, is that, Randy? Very late. <coughs> Are you ready for the big day, then? I think so. I expect there'll be one or two last-minute panics. You think so? Ooh, I do. Yes, maybe she's rather a special sort of person, isn't she? Well, it's not just that. It's the very thought she's getting married. It's a wonderful institution, is marriage. 
two cold single beds turning into a big warm double one. Oh, the very thought of it makes me feel all funny. Of course, I'm a hot-blooded woman. <laughs> really? I'd be surprised if you are, though. Brian reckons we might be doing all this extra work and not seeing another penny for it. Yeah, and so do I. Go on. I thought you were dead keen on your sandwich run. Well, I am. I mean, it gets me out and about meeting different people. <laughs> Meeting different lives, you mean? I've noticed it's taking you longer and longer to do your own. Well, I mean, they keep telling me my bike's got a punch and offering to mend it for me. <laughs> How corny can you get? I know. Still, I agree with Brian. I reckon we should be on extra lolly. Have you put us in for a ride yet? No, not yet. Well, I'll ask for one if you want. I shall say I'm the shop steward, and if we don't get one, we shall start industrial action. I'll do any excuse. You know what he has done? <laughs> You what? Rag room to me. I do know that. You could have been one, you know. One of your miss your chance. I'm promised to harm on now. Oh, well, life's not all pain and tribulation then, is it? Do you mind if I join you, Mr. Wilson? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> Working to a plan, are you then, Mr. Wilson? Pardon? Well, today you got yourself organised for all the various things you've got to do. Well, I wouldn't say organised exactly, but uh, I'm getting along very nicely, thank you. What's next on the agenda? Next? Well, after you've had your cuppa here. Well, I still have one or two odd bits of shopping to do. <laughs> New pair of pyjamas, actually. Then what? Well, lunch, I suppose. Where? The Rovers. Oh, the Rovers, eh? Good. I'm glad you approve. Thank, Thank you. you. All set for tomorrow? Oh, yes, I think so. That's the spirit. Uh, Ken, hmm? will you be going in the Rovers tonight? Uh, I'm not sure. Why? Well, it's just that Derek's going to be in to buy people a drink, and I'm just worried in case there's nobody there to buy a drink for. Oh, well, I've got a meeting, but I'll pop in after, especially oh. if he's paying. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye, Ken. Well, at least he won't be completely on his own. Hmm? Oh, Derek tonight. I, I was worried about him sitting all on his own in the Rovers, you know, with him not having many pals. No. I mean, he could start brooding, couldn't he? Brooding? Yes, brooding about, well, getting married to me. And you know what brooding can lead to? Questions and doubts. Mavis, I thought we decided you were definitely getting married tomorrow. Yes, I know, but I can't help worrying. I mean, last night, all night long, six words kept going round and round in my head. Supposing it doesn't turn up again. Mavis, say after me. Derek is not going to let me down tomorrow. Now, come on, say it. Derek is not going to let me down tomorrow. Good. Now, believe it, for God's sake. Otherwise, you won't be there tomorrow. You'll be a fruit and nut case. Have you lift? No, it's all right. We're only going to the chippy on the corner. Oh, are you then? It's a van, that's a van. Oh, I've got myself a new frightened pendant. Oh, have you? Yeah. Red Wing Road, 12A. Don't put it down. No, I can remember it. How's Rita? Oh, she's fine. Yeah. Maybe she's giving her you know, driving her mad over this morning. Uh, so what's new? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to come tomorrow? I don't know. Oh, why don't you just pop into the reception? I mean, maybe it's a bit close. No, no. I'd, uh, I'd be a bit embarrassed, you know. So would a lot of other people, I think. Well, Rita would like to come. See you around, then. Yeah, hey. Come and see me in my new flat. Yeah. <laughs> see you. Well now, Jack, my little mockingbird, I wouldn't have expected you to be quite so cheerful today. Well, why not? Where's my bird? Exactly. Can't be that exhilarating, racing towards old age. What do you mean? I'm only 49. Is that all? I'm surprised. <laughs> there we are, Derrick. Thank you. Hey, uh, I believe you're having your doing here tonight. Oh, not a do, exactly. Just a quiet drink with a few friends. Thank you. 
more than just a few, from what I've heard. Oh? So I thought it might be a good idea if you put some grub on, you know, pies, butties. Oh, sorts no, of... I don't think... No, um... then it's... Us fellas could only have one steak to get up. It'll be my third, actually. Amazing. A bloke like you, there's a stud like me, I've only managed one. Anyway, it's just custom and plastic, so put some grub on. Like 20 quid and see a right good notion, you know? 20 pounds. In advance, aye. Huh? All right. Good, good, and I'll sort it out for you. But do you know what? I nearly forgot. You still want to buy that microwave off me, don't you? Oh, no, I don't No, maybe so. Some. Love it. I mean, just think, you'd be able to keep your porridge in it every morning. That puts a lady in your pencil, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Derek Wilton wants some grub putting on tonight, 20 quid with pies and butters. You're a crafty snake, Jacko. What do you mean? Killing two parties with his brass. Your birthday party and his stag do. Oh, well, you to be sharp as a razor blade, better when you're one of the world's have not What were you talking to Jack Duckworth about? Well, I've decided to have a little buffet in here tonight. A buffet? Yes, Jack seems to think there'll be a lot of people here, so I thought it's the least I can do. Well, I suppose it is. And, and, and there's another thing. It's as well to have some food if you're into a heavy drinking session. I mean, I don't want to be hors de combat with a hangover tomorrow, do I? No, you don't. You know how these things tend to get out of hand. At my last bachelor do, I ended up by standing on the table and singing a wandering minstrel, I. <laughs> From the Mikado, you know. Yes, I do know. You're not going to drink too much tonight, are you, Dad? Trust me, Mavis. I mean, that's what marriage is all about, you know. Trust and respect. It's much more important than, um, well, you know, the other thing. Mr. Wilton? Oh, Mr. Sugden. Mavis, is Mr. Sugden all there? It can be a bit eccentric. Why? Well, I have this feeling he's following me. <laughs> Ta-da, love. See you at the moment. Hey, you see me tonight. Maybe it's party. Oh, of course I will. Are you looking forward to it? I don't think I am. Why not? Well, it's the way Mavis has been acting. I mean, it's going to be more of a week than a party. Hey, I wish it were me that we're getting married tomorrow. I'd be walking on air, especially for the first thing. Good night, love. Good night. Good night, you. I'm never going to get married, me. Really? Nope, and I'm not going to have any kids either. My life is going to be about me and only me. I'll have to live on a desert island then, won't you? Oh, I'm sorry, we're closed. Hey, Gina, this is Alma, uh, Mrs. Sedgwick. Oh, sorry, come in. And this is Gina. Oh, the new recruit. I hope you're as keen as getting folk in, love, as you are getting them out. Well, I uh, often go out on the street and drag them in, don't I, Gail? <laughs> Only when we're slack. <laughs> I thought you were still away. No, I've come back yesterday. Two or three surprises. I mean, what's all this about a bike? When I saw it on your outgoings, I thought you'd treated yourself to an early Christmas present. Oh, it's for me sandwich round. It's a butcher's bike. Sandwich round? Yeah, it's our new venture, isn't it, Gail? It's going a bomb. Uh, Gina, why don't you get Mrs. Sedgwick a cup of tea? I'm sure she'd like one. I think I need one. Shall we sit down? Delivering sandwiches on a butcher's bike. What's going on? Well, it was my idea. We make the sandwiches here and then deliver them round and about. Who to? Well, well all sorts. Shops, offices, garages, uh, Bolton Slipper Works. Gina's a right little live wire. She ferrets out new customers every day. I was hoping to get a chance to talk to you about Yeah, well, I should hope you were. You don't sound like you approve. I don't. I mean, you must be pretty stretched in here while like, she's out doing her sandwiches. I mean, you can't be doing as much business in the cafe, can you, love? Ah, but we're more than making up for it with a sandwich around, aren't we, eh, Gail? <laughs> in fact, we was going to ask you for a rise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you? Do you know, I think I'd rather see you serving pie and peas in here, love, rather than riding around on a butcher's bike, showing off your legs. You're not ready to pack it in, you? Meditate. 
tea. Ah, you're a good one. I know. <laughs> Won't be a minute. I saw my dad today. Did you? Yeah, he stopped in his car. Oh. He asked how you were. Did he? Yeah, it was up a flat in Red Wing Road. So it's true then? Mm. At least we know he's living on his own, don't we? I don't suppose he said if he was coming tomorrow, did he? No, he didn't, no. Oh, hello. Hi. Peter, I've had a disaster. Hmm? Sort of a disaster. Well, the fillings have slipped out of the bottom of my volivants. <laughs> you don't think it's an omen, do you? <sighs> Late it, Teddy? Yeah, yeah, there we are. Oh, right. Well, yeah, Derek, lad, get your tonsils round, lad. I only asked for a half. I never drink pints. Oh, that's not allowed on a batch of the goo. A half? Oh, sorry. <laughs> £7.50, please. All right. Hey, should Thank we be you. having a kit? You can't expect Mr. Wilson to be sticking his hand in his pocket all night. What a good idea, Percy. We'll have a kitchen from now on. I'll organise it, <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Sugden. I'd never have thought of that. Oh, you're in the hands of a man of the world, Mr. Wilson. Cheers, Jerry. Cheers, Jerry. Yeah, cheers, cheers, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Oh, oh, you best, Another nice one, Jack. What do you mean, Jack? Suggesting a kitty before birthday boy has to shell out for his own round. Do you know what? It completely slipped my mind, that. Yeah. Mm. How much you pay for? Oh, no. Don't waste your money, are you? I need double tops. Double tops? Ah, oh. oh, oh no. Almost. No. Hey, listen, I hope you two are not thinking of stopping. You know, women are not allowed at bachelor parties. Oh. Hey, guess what this is? This is wedding present. Take it round for round, Sam. Huh? Hope you will be able to stop at all. Ah, so I don't know. Do you know what she's got her? Oh, yeah. I'm always curtains and the seconds at that. She won't know, will she? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, I'm on a scale. Yeah. All right, let's... Yeah. Hey, what's, the, what's the game plan? Well, I'll ring the uh, pub number if you answer the phone in the hall. Yeah, well, what's this bloke's name? Victor. Victor. Victor, 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 Victor Pendleberry. He was a bloke that Mavis fancied once, according to Ben. Victor Pendleberry. Yeah, yeah. Great. What's going on, Derek? Derek's going to get a phone call. That's it. Derek, Derek, mate, phone call for you. For me? Yeah. Uh, the, Book called Victor. You, you can take it in the hall if you want. Victor? Yes, he said that you know him. Uh, hello, Derek. Yeah, it's me, Victor Pendlebury. Remember me? Yeah, yeah, I thought you would do. Um, she's asked me to tell you that she can't really go through with the wedding tomorrow. She's, uh, she's decided to come away with me instead. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. Very sorry. Sir, <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. <laughs> and very childish him. Oh, oh, shut up, Percy. Kill Joy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> What's the matter, mate? It's not bad news, is it? All right. Who was the comedian on the phone? Comedian? What comedian? Was it you? Me. No, it was me. How did you know? Well, for one thing, Victor Pendlebury has a voice once heard, never forgotten. You find that with opinionated people. <laughs> and for another thing, <clears throat> Mavis would never desert me for him. Never in a million years. Well, it was a good try. No <laughs> offence meant, mate. Yeah. None take. Good Good right. Right. Give that man a large brandy on me for keeping his wits about him on the eve of his execution. Quite right, too. <laughs> well spotted, Mr. Wilkins. If you had to see it was a joke, I'd have stepped in sharp and put you wise. By the way, what time are you going home? Oh, I don't know. Why? Well, we don't want to be leaving it too late, do we? We? How do you think, my lad? Get out down here. Yeah, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is this Mr. Sutton, um, uh, you, you know, um... What do you mean? Well, you know... Oh! Well, he does say the happiest days of his life, so when he was in the army, with a long ballad. Oh, thank you. Do you mind if I open it later when I've got a missing? Yeah, only when you like, love. I think you like it. Thanks very much. Would you like to stay for a drink? Oh, well, we'll do. Where are we? Oh, no. Uh, but if you insist, well, I wouldn't mind a gin and salmon. Right, I'd be. Well, I'll have the same. Yeah. I'll come and take your clothes. Hi, everybody. I'll be with you in the salmon. What have we here, then? A couple of gay crashes? No, no. We've come to have total proceedings on. Yeah, exactly. I thought that's why I was asking. Oh, I like your dress. I saw one just like it in Fairbanks window. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mavis seems to be taking it all in a stride this time. She's a bag of nerves. Oh, don't exaggerate, Billy. Well, she came in captain this afternoon, looked at me for a full minute, and then said, Oh, I'm sorry, I should be in chemist. She did, have not <laughs> Right, here you are. Oh, there. Oh, cheers. Thank you. Well, Mavis. <laughs> 
good luck for tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, that fellow yours, though, is having enjoying himself in Rovers, isn't he? Oh! Stoned out of his head, yes, kid. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. What did you have to go and tell her that for? Please, in it. <laughs> How did he get in that state? He's only had two pints of a brandy. Wish I could get that stoned on two pints of a brandy. Hey, perhaps he's a secret drinker. He just needs a couple to top him up. I know a few like that. Uh, I'll see if he's alive. Derek. Derek. Still on, is it? You still want to buy me microwave off me? Look very nice in your bottom drawer. Mavis would love it. Can let you have it tonight. Blink, if you understand. What are you doing to this man? Nothing. I'm just trying to bring him back from the dead. I'm in charge of him. I've had a lot of experience of drunks. The worst I had was a jock who'd stolen the tank. What do you do with him? I stood in his path and nodded his walk. What do you think I did? Uh, Rita's just been on the phone. Yes, uh, we've got to hide Derek. Apparently Mavis is on her way around. Ken, Ryan, we need to go. You've got to ask Sergeant Major Sutton's permission to call you the man. Come here, get him through. Right, come on. Right, right. He makes a very good drunk, doesn't he? Being one sort of a bunch to start with. Mavis, you are never on one of your book crawls tonight. Nay, lass. Where's Derek? Derek? Derek is long gone. Uh, he wanted to be fighting fit for tomorrow, isn't that right? Yes. Everybody? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 yes, you're marrying a man of sober habits and uncommon oh. common sense there, Thank Mavis. Thank goodness. Oh, yes, indeed. So, why don't you about turn and take me back to your thrash? I was just on my way. Oh. Oh. We don't have to stop sober, do we? Bye. 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 Have <laughs> hey, a close call. What me? Oh, 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 you in the army too? No, mate. Hey, what are we going to do with him? <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do with him. I'm going to put him in a taxi and take him home. Right. He's not taking me home. Please don't let him take me home. Please. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, so, uh, yeah. I think you're volleyball to do this. Oh, well, second time looking. Oh, no, oh, no, it's just a, a little hiccup this afternoon, oh. eh, Rita? You could say that. You could be around to word with you. Oh, oh, right. Right. Excuse me. Oh, well, Come here, snuggling, a word to the wise. Now, the first thing you do when you get him on his own tomorrow night... I think she knows that, but... Never mind that lucky talk, girl. The first thing you do when you get him on his own tomorrow night is you give him a damn good hiding. Start as you mean to go on. Mind you, I hope it doesn't turn him on like it did my Alec. <laughs> I'll try and remember that night. Hey, look, you know, my advice is exactly the opposite. Wait, Glory. Oh. Oh. You've got to act all really helpless. You know, it's make so him so feel so superior. Nice we know yeah. they're not, but fellas love that. <laughs> Come on, it's a small <laughs> price to pay for him paying all the bills. Now, ours is going to be a modern marriage, Audrey. Share it, share it. There I was, waiting at the church, waiting at the... Then I found it left me in the lurch. Oh, how it did. Vera? Oh, sorry, love. Do you know what I'm going to Honest. It's all right, Vera. I'm not upset. As a matter of fact, I feel quite tranquil about tomorrow now. Well, I think there comes a time when you have to stop worrying and dithering and, and just accept what life's got in store for you. You might say I've reached a state of grace about tomorrow. And about the future. Good on you, Mavis. Cheers, love. Cheers, love. Thank you. Come on, Derek, in you go, lad. What's happening to my legs? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. What are you doing with that? You bought it off me, haven't you? Make sure you can get some hot meals. My legs. Derek, pay me when you can. Like tomorrow. 200 quid, slip the price. Get out of the way. Right. Go on, get, get, him get him in. Oh. Get him in. Get it out. Take it easy. Go on, get, get him off the floor. Right, driver, lock him down. Get off. Off the floor, Percy. <laughs> you would dread to think what he's going to look like tomorrow. Doesn't matter thinking about, does it? Oh. Morning. 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 
morning. Oh. How did the bride sleep? <laughs> Think fitful is the word. <laughs> well, I would have let you have a lie in. I heard you up and about. Yes, well, I got up to go to the loo and I thought, shall I get up now? And I thought, no, I'll just climb back in and have a few more minutes. <laughs> well, you're spoiling me. <laughs> hey, don't expect me to make a habit of it. I only do this on wedding days. <laughs> Mind you, your husband might if you train him proper. <gasps> My husband. And then you got to make yourself a boiled egg. Them's orders. <laughs> Never get married on empty stomach. There's nought worse than a bride with a rumbling belly. <laughs> I'd do it for you, but I've got to get back down. Young Silla's holding for for five minutes. What time did you get up? Oh, too early. Considering the amount I took aboard last night. Still, somebody had to do papers. Well, you should have woken me. Oh, give over. I mean, it's bad enough the matron of honour looking like the wrath of God. <laughs> We don't want the bride looking the same way, do we? Oh, you look lovely, you always do. I wish I could borrow a bit of your charisma, just for the day. I mean, whatever I do to myself, I always end up looking like me. <laughs> it's you we want to marry, Flower. You turned up looking like me, you'd run like hell. Do you think he really does love me, Reed? Must do. number of times you've knocked him back, always bounces back for more. I hope he doesn't think me stupid. Why should he? Oh, not very worldly. Well, I don't know very much about the marital side. Well, I shouldn't expect Derek to be all that experienced. No, but he has been married. Which, by all accounts, was a total disaster. He never cared for Angela the way he cares for you. And that's what makes things work between a man and a woman. That bond of warmth. When you've got that, everything else follows naturally. Did you used to have that? You and Alan? Alan? Alan who? Now listen, Riley, I'm going to leave you to start making yourself look beautiful. Hey, I'll have to stop calling you that after today, won't I? Wilton, put kettle on. I dare say I'll get used to it. Oh, maybe slow. It's all right. I'm fine. It's just, I, I've just realised how everything's going to change. I'm not. Wish I was. Preferably more like Princess Diane. <laughs> Dear Rita, always a joke for every occasion. Yeah, that's me. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry to disturb you so early, but I'm worried about Mr. Sutton. He's not been home all night. Good old Percy must have slept lucky. Oh, is he? Nobody, nobody. Go back to Kit. He's got hangover an hour. Did you by any chance see him leave the Rovers last night? Yes, he went off in a taxi with the condemned man, huh? The condemned... I take it you mean Derek? Legless, he was. Mr. Sutton? Oh, Wilton Wilton. Still, can't say as I blame him. Poor son. Right. Yeah. What she decided, did she say? Nope. She just said she'd be here at 5 30. And what are we supposed to do meanwhile? We carry on. Absolutely. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, it seems a bit stupid working the socks over someone that may get the chop. She'll not give it the chop, not when she sees the potential. Yeah, well, we're not just going to chuck, eh? Hey? No, she is the boss. Yeah, well, she's never flipping here. It's us that does all the work. Lass has got something there. I'm just pointing out that Alma's got the last say. Well, don't point out. You just get back to your own work. I don't know what you're doing here anyway. I came here to see if you want to pick it up after the reception, but obviously you don't. Do you think there'll be enough? Derek wanted to sit down to her originally when they're only going to be about half a dozen, but it seems to have grown. Emily, calm down. Anybody would think it was you getting wed. I'm worried about Mr. Sugden. Well, don't. He's a big lad now. But if he's still with Derek, that must mean there's a problem. Even he couldn't chicken out twice. Oh, speaking of chickens, how many eggs do you want boiling? I'll try that one. Oh, just a minute, love. Kevin. Oh, hello, Emily. How are things your end? Everything's going tickety-boo. 
He's what? Are you sure he's with Derek? Well, now, look, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad news. No, he's not on the phone. I've got his address, though. Oh, would you? Ah, well, you see, I'd go, but I'm on my own in shop. Right, it's... Right, thanks. And, obviously, not a word to Mavis. <laughs> Bye. Look, I'll just get them buns buttered, and then I'll get round there. You've got enough to do. It's so unlike Mr. Sugden to me. Ah. Mr. Sugden, I've been worried sick. Apologies. Now, I would have phoned, but it was after midnight. I escorted the bridegroom home now. I didn't intend to stop, but, uh, you know, they said he was in. I, 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 de I deemed it the right thing to do. Now, I can't hang about. I've got to get back to base before he wakens up. Hey, how is Derek? Dodgy. Very dodgy. Kept muttering about not wanting to make another mistake. So I'd better go and get my clothes and my shaving tattle and get back before he does a runner again on that poor woman. You don't really think he will? Not if I've got out to do with it, he won't. No, Miss Riley's expecting to become a missus today, and a missus she'll become. You wouldn't think that had been touched by human hands. Oh, oh thank God, yes. Oh, oh. Look, oh, I really begin to believe okay. I am going to be married You now. don't want a Miss Air appointment. Go on, get oh. off with it. You and all right. right. Oh, it is good to be oh, all good. Oh, isn't it? Very. Right. Now, go on, get oh. off. And will you tell Lorraine I'll be there in a minute? Yeah, do, do you think I've got time to go to school fields and change those tights? I do think they're a bit on the dark side. Dark ones are more flattering. Make your ankles look thinner now. Get oh. off with you. All right, bye. 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 Eee, if that was all we had to worry about, colour of her tights. Why, what's so? up? Well, nothing, I hope. But if Emily phones with any bad news, for heaven's sake, don't tell Mavis. Wait till I get back, love. Hey, you! Hey! All right, where is he? Ah, light of my life. How's your angle? The better I trust. Never mind my flaming angle. Where's my flaming microwave? Oh, you finally noticed, then. Eh? Well, where is it? Sold it. Do what? Well, I never wanted it in the first place. I've never consulted, and it is mine by right. So I flogged it. Hey, 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 hey. Mm. Go, bust a gut, man. Come on, it, it's not worth it, is it? Now look, you still got the bed and, and, and the washing machine. He sold me, man. Not gone too bad in the circumstances, have you? Okay, come on, let me buy you a drink, Alec. Yes, please. So how is she then? Excited. <laughs> she just put it finishing touches too. You don't look so dusty yourself, madam. Thank you. Your dad likes me in this colour. It suits you. Do you think he'll turn up later? He might do. Mm. Ah, there she is. Oh. oh. <laughs> you look smashing, Mavis. You do <laughs> honestly, love. You don't think this hat's a bit... It's perfect. You're going to knock him cold, you are. Oh, well, I'll get that. Now, that'll be taxi come early. There we are, love. Thank you. There you go. Oh, just a minute. Rita. I just want to remember all the times I've been here, lonely. <laughs> just me and Harriet. Next time I come through that door, I'll be a married woman. Oh, I can feel a bit scared. <laughs> now, I had to come and wish the bride all the best. My God, where is she? What have you done with Mavis? <laughs> don't be silly, Beth. I don't look that different. You look fabulous, kid. Thank you. Please. Do you remember Blackpool? Three single girls on two to her, then were the days. Look at us now, all spoke for. I'm sorry, kid. Me and my big gob. It'll work out, you see. It's worked out for Maeve. Who'd have given odds on that? All the luck in the world, kid. Thank you, Beth. That's the taxi. Bride goes first. Go for it, Maeve. Come on. Oh, dear. Well, we are a few minutes early. Well, it's damp. You'll be waiting in there. No, no, we, we said we'd meet on the steps. Go in together. That is, unless it... Mavis, 
No. You're right. <laughs> I've got lipstick on my teeth. And your underslip isn't showing either. Hey, this will be in now. Oh, great. It's weather. <laughs> So Lynn's with him, but I don't know what's... Uh, what is it? What's oh, the matter? Oh, no, no, um, oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, yes. This looks as if it's... Ah, yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment. Why I, Derek Bernard Wilton, may not be joined in matrimony to Mavis Riley. Why I, Derek Bernard Wilton, may not be joined in matrimony to Mavis Riley. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not. That I know not of any lawful impediment why I, Mavis Riley, may not be joined in matrimony to Derek Bernard Wilton. Of any lawful impediment why I, Mavis Riley, may not be joined in matrimony to Derek Bernard Wilton. Now, say to each other, I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Derek Bernard Wilton, do take thee, Mavis Riley, to be my lawful wedded wife. To witness that I, Derek Bernard Wilton, do take thee, Mavis Riley, to be my lawful wedded wife. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Mavis Riley, do take thee, Derek Bernard Wilton, to be my lawful wedded husband. To witness that I, Mavis Riley, do take thee, Derek Bernard Wilton, to be my lawful wedded husband. Good. Would you put the ring on the bride's finger? It is now my pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations. You may kiss the bride. I told you I'd get him here, and I did. This, Mrs. Turpin, oh, I've some experience of confectioner's art. Uh, this cake. Oh, very nice. A little gem is that. It's a masterpiece of the confectioner's art, in fact. Come on, guess who made it? Have a guess. Oh, Dawson's, the yeah, ice street. Well, she finally made it. Yeah. One down, one to go. Do you think Alan will show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you something for nothing. No. I'm not the only one who's hoping he does. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Jack, I've got to take me hat off to you. Risking the wrath of God's one thing, risking wrath of Vera's quite another. How much did he give you for it? I asked him for 200 quid. You asked? 
You mean he haven't got anything yet? Well, he'd hardly be carrying 200 quid with him on his stag night, would he? Oh, that's never a smart move, that, Jack. Always get the cash before you're handing over the goods. That's my motto. Uh, but I had to get out of the house before now Vera come back. He, he won't do me. He won't carry it with me. No. Well, no, 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 no. no. And at least you'll have something in writing. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so, so. Will you never learn the ways of the wicked world? Well, maybe so. It all seemed to go without a hitch this time. Derek, I think we should come to an agreement. Never to mention the past. Ever. Oh, I wasn't referring to our last... I wouldn't be that insensitive, Mavis. Not today of all days. No, I was talking about my marriage to Angela. Everything that could go wrong did. Talk about signs and portents. <laughs> Derek, when I say we shouldn't mention the past, that includes Angela. Especially Angela. Yes, of course. Quite. Right, now, according to my agenda, the time has arrived for the ceremonial cutting of the cake. Bride and groom, this way, please. Yes, yes. Still no word from Milano? It's all ceremony, Mr. Bradley. Oh, you do right, Kiki. You're better off without him. Well, he can stay with his flaming tart. He's welcome. Can we have a bit of bush, please, then, Jenna? Maybe some lovely. I'm sorry, we're late, but it's not just there is out. You know what a swine he is. Oh, hey, talk about radiance. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, that least we're here now, aren't we, to drink your very good ale? Good. <laughs> Ladies, you are interrupting a very important part of the proceedings. Okay, me and Abby arriving is an important part of the proceedings. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to me has fallen the honour of proposing the toast to the bride and groom. Who appointed him? Yes. <laughs> now, I've known Miss Riley. Uh, oh. Mrs. Wilton, <laughs> for quite a few years now. As a matter of fact, ever since I secured my post as the caretaker of the Weatherfield Community <laughs> Centre, um, in which capacity Mr. I've Mr. served Mr. for the rest of the... Just a simple toast would suffice. Oh, yes, I see. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I charge you to raise your glasses to the bride and groom. Oh, oh, right, 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 um, well, I shan't say ladies and gentlemen, I'll just say... Friends. Oh. <laughs> Thank you all for being here and uh, sharing our happy day. Uh, not to mention all your kind and generous gifts. <laughs> what? Emily, the food. Oh, yes, I was just coming to that. Thanks also to Emily for providing this magnificent spread. <laughs> and, and to Mr. Sugden for making the cake. My wife and I. <laughs> appreciate your friendship and support. I mean, the road may at times have been rocky, but uh, the good ship Wilton has finally sailed into harbour with a very proud captain oh. and first mate. Oh, 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 thank you. Lovely, oh, darling. Hey, but she's not his first mate. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, a bit of voice, please, while we have the cake cutting. Oh, the cake cutting. We have the cake cutting. Oh, yes, that's right. I have not missed all the booze. In the middle there. Gail won't be long, Mrs. Edwards. She's just nipped out for a second. Oh, oh she's wow, I'm sorry to keep you. Oh, she's only just arrived here. Right. Well, you girls go on. I'll lock up. Right, love. Ta-ra. See you in the morning, darling. Right, well, now, this won't take long, Gail, love. And my, I'm meeting this rather gorgeous bloke for drinks at six, so I'll come straight to the point. I've, uh, I've been thinking about this sandwich delivery idea, and, uh, and I've decided uh, that the answer's no. What? No, it stops as of from today. But that doesn't make sense, shutting down a perfectly good business. No, it's not a perfectly good business. I mean, it's only been going for five minutes. But it's building nicely. All we need is a bit of time. No, no, no. This is the business, Gail, love. I mean, it's got a steady trade and a regular income. I know where I am with this. I mean, the other one, I mean, let's face it, love. I mean, it's wide open to any sort of fiddle. And who exactly do you think's going to fiddle you? Oh, well, not you, love. I mean, but that kid. I mean, it's pure cash in hand. It's, it's pure temptation to a girl like that. I trust Gina. Yeah, well, so do I, love, as long as she's working here where you can keep your eye on her. Now, concentrate on this business, Gail, love. I mean, don't go off on some half-cock scheme again, eh? We've worked very hard on this. We all have. What happens if I say I won't give it up? Well, then, love, I mean, much as I value your services, I mean, nobody's indispensable. 
All right? Well, I must dash. You don't keep good-looking blokes waiting. <laughs> well, not when you get to my age. You certainly don't. Go on, they believe in some. Go on. Hey, hey, Derek, do us a favour and uh, rave to Alfie about Gay Parry when you get back. Because I'm on and on at him to take me there again, you know. Oh, 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 oh. I like that. Oh, well, I don't think we'll be sampling the actual nightlife. Oh, <laughs> with the wise engaged, eh? Oh. No, it's the sights we want to see. Oh. The uh, Sacre Coeur and the Arc de Triomphe and the Eiffel Tower. Oh, I hope my husband will put up with me if I get vertigo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh. A word in your shell like... Oh, is that somebody? Yeah. 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 Of course, I heard a note. Oh, that's better get this one. Yeah. Oh, no, it's the general. Oh, it's Hello, have a lovely time. Hey, and if you see Patrice, give him a black eye from me. My dad wants me not like No. No, Janet, get yourself a drink or something to eat. There's plenty left. Rita, I just want a word before we go, just to say thank you. What for? What's in you about all day? Hey, and them tights look fine. No, just, well, for everything. <laughs> You're a wonderful friend. And the way you've kept me going today. Well, it can't have been easy to keep a smile on your face. Listen. I'm what? If getting married turned you into an even soppier wet Nelly, I'm sorry you bothered Riley. Hmm? Sorry, we'll talk. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, may visit you oh, all. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Hey, mate, just before you go, the, the microwave. Oh, it was you who gave it us. I've got a rather hazy recollection of last night's events. I'm ashamed to admit. I didn't give it you. Excuse me. Yes, bye-bye. Come on, Jim, I can. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I dreamt I could fly. Go. And I weren't the only one that could fly. There were lots of us up there. And you know, I felt really sorry for them on the ground who couldn't fly like us. Uh, Gail, look, uh... I don't want this house turning into a sandwich factory. <laughs> anyway, we floated over the rooftops and we floated over the garden. Gail, will you listen, please? I've got to go to work in a minute. You don't want this house turning into a sandwich factory. Right. Mm -hmm. And besides, we can't afford to go chucking our money away on crazy ideas. Look, you've got a good job there. Not after next week, I haven't. You would have if you got all this stuff about sandwiches out of your head and go back to running the cuff like Alma wants it running. I mean, she does own the place. The clean tea? Yes, Miss Whistle said it. Have you got any yogurt cartons or plastic bottles? Yep, I've got them ready for you. Hang on. And another thing, right? I don't want our money used to pay wages to that stupid Gina individual. That's not what I plug my goods up for at the garage. You're not rowing again. You keep out of it, you. And no, we're not rowing. We're just discussing something. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, yeah. Give those to Miss Wilson. Go ahead. I'm serious, Gail. We've got a good job at that, Captain. We need the money. What we don't need are some stupid ideas, right? That's going to make us lose every penny we've got. I'll bear that in mind, Brian. Oh, you will? Well, thank you. That's very good of you. It's very good of you to even listen to me. Come on, son, I'll get you to school. Bye, Nicky! Bye, Mum! Anyway, there we were, floating through the clouds. And you were there. You could fly. Nicky was there. He could fly. Not your daddy, though. He couldn't fly. He was one of them on the ground, flapping his wings like mad. But he can't fly. Not if he tried for a million years, he couldn't fly. Well, if it were me... Go on. Well, I'd go round to that yard and I'd say, Alan, I've asked you nicely if you would remove your business elsewhere. 
You did ask him nicely, didn't you? You didn't just say bog off. Well, I like to think I was reasonably civilised. Well, then. I'd say up till now, I've been reasonably civilised about it. And you're still here. So now I'm telling you, bog off. Well, according to Jenny, he does have plan to move. I mean, he's got this shop somewhere he's got his eye on. But in his own sweet time. Well... He still owes you money, don't he? Well, I don't know whether he can say he owes it me. I mean, I gave him a cheque to help him get started. Oh, come on, Rita, you're being soft. You know that. You're letting him walk all over you. Well, it's not that easy. I know it's not easy. Nobody said it'd be easy, but you've got to stand up for yourself. Morning, ladies. Morning. And here's another one. Hey, Another what? A man. Oh, yeah. Uh, give us a pack of my cigars, we let have, and uh, I'll have this paper. Thanks. So? So... How does it feel to be part of an inferior species, a race of super rats? Oh, you get used to it. Well, I don't know how. I mean, why do you all have to be such lying, cheating, treacherous toads there, Mike? That's what I like about you born-again feminists. You scream your head off if I say anything detrimental about you women, yet you think you've got the God-given right to slag us men off something rotten. Well, you deserve it. Tell you one thing, huh? Do you want to know why most men lie? Yeah. Because you women expect compliments all the time. We're forced to. <laughs> Get out before I step on you. When did your big date go last night, then? Oh, very steamy. Very steamy indeed. Oh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. I suppose you and Webby have been married that long, you've forgotten what it's like. It'll be a bit stale for you now, won't it? Well, I gather that this lady friend of yours has been married quite a while and all. Yes, but she's separated, OK? Separated from her husband. Oh, yes, so you say. I don't go looking for married women, you know. Life's complicated enough. <laughs> What's all this about married women talking about me, are you? Oh, not really. <laughs> See you then. See ya. So. Oh, right, Alfredo, I'm off into town. Now you want it, but... Not like I can think of, no. Well, I may be back for lunch and I may not. Oh, well, that's helpful. Well, why you've not made other arrangements, have you? Mm. Oh, I'll stop away if you set up another secret meeting with Rita Burkle. Look, I've not been having secret meetings. I told you that. I just asked her how she was coping. Yes, of course she did. I did. Well, she's got a lot on her plate, you know, with this Alan business. Oh, don't worry, Chuck. You'll know soon enough when I'm really jealous. Well, he called for me, took me to pictures, then we come in here for a quick drink, then he took me home again. I mean, that's all there is to tell. Ah, oh, yes, but you're still, well, you know, keen, like. Oh, he's lovely, Betty, oh. he really is. I'm not used to being treated so well. He's dead considerate. Oh. Good for him. I might as well not take my purse out with me, because I never get a chance to open it. Oh, and it's not just that. Mm. No, it's his own, you know, manner towards me. Hey, you might have given it a oh, shout to have a flipping brew on. Oh, oh we God. knew you'd be up sooner or later. <laughs> oh, when it's flaming cold, he's not worse than a cold cup of tea. Well, you know what you need, Jacko? What? A microwave. I believe the champion for warming stuff. Like Don't that. mention oh, that. Oh, dear, have I said the wrong thing? Is Vera still on at you to get hers oh. back? You know, she's really? never given me a minute's peace, that woman. Microwave this, microwave that. I wish I'd never set flaming eyes on it. Oh, oh dear, I'll try and remember not to mention it again. Mm. Have you seen him again, then? Mm. When? Well, tonight, as a matter of fact. Oh, it's obviously a very fast mover. Mm, well, one of them is. Now, what I want to know is... Now, you say you took your... Mm. What went on when you got there? Listen, perhaps she doesn't want to tell us that bit. Well, Jack's not listening, are you? No. Invite him in, did you? Well, I could, could I? Not with Jason there. Oh, shame. Mm. So it all went on on the doorstep, then? Well, we said us goodbyes, yeah. Oh, come on. I mean, she's entitled to a little bit of privacy, you know. She is, which is why, if I were her, I'd make damn sure it were Jason who went at pictures tonight. Oh. Well, we'll see. You never would. If we must. Hi, Brian. Shall we sit over there? <laughs> he doesn't look too happy, does he? No, no, that does girl. But have you noticed she's yeah. not been talking about her plans like she was yesterday? Do you know something, Phyllis? I'm never going to get married. I'm going to live in a commune. Hey, let me know where it is. I'll come and join you. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you without the kids being there. You couldn't wait till tonight? I don't know what you may have done with tonight, do I? Oh, I've not completely lost my senses, right? Well, you're acting like it. Look, you can't drive, can you? What? And neither can Gina, right? So who's going to do all the fetching and carrying for you that this business of yours has been tell? Because it's not going to be me. I can promise you that from the start. Well, I've no intention. It should be you. Well, then. Well, I can learn, can't I? And until then, we'll carry on with a bicycle the way we're doing now. A bicycle? Yes. Folk like it, actually. It's become a commerce trademark. I'm not going to argue. Oh, really? 
While you work in here, okay, look, I've all the side lines you want. Sandwiches, bicycles, but you're concerned. Exactly. But don't expect me to back the whole daft scheme and risk... And risk losing everything. Yeah, all right. What? I won't ask you to risk everything, Brian. It just isn't fair. I mean, not if you're the last person in the world, I wouldn't ask you. So what are you going to do? Why don't you just forget about sandwiches and bicycles and just go back to running the cuff like Alma wants it running? No. It's just pride, this guy. That's what all this is about. Just because you can't have your own way, you're determined to spoil it for everybody else. But right, I've got to go to work. Looks like I'm going to be doing a lot more in the future as well, aren't I? Oh, I don't know. No, it's not that. No, I think Alec would be glad to be sure to me. I just can't imagine myself in one of them places. Well, yes. Uh, yes. Oh, and they guarantee that, do they? Younger, slimmer and fitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I get my money back if I'm not? Oh, I'm excuse me. Oh, hello, love. Uh, what are you having to drink? Oh, I'll have a vodka and tonic. Please. Vodka and tonic, please, Jack. Uh, well, actually, I wanted to ask you something. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, well, looking for Sandra, are you? Yeah, I wondered if I might just catch her. Yes, I think. Oh, somebody I couldn't wait for tonight. Hello. I was just passing, so I thought I'd drop in. Well, you couldn't have times it better. I've just finished. Oh, well, I'll give you a lift. Uh, or would you like a drink first? Well, only if I'm allowed to buy this time. Can you do without me for a day or two? We'll do his best. Because we've got to go to London. So I want you to drive me, but only as far as the station. Then the car sits outside my flat until I phone you to pick me up, all right? Sure. Before I go there, there is something very important I want you to do for me. Just say the word. Very important. Yeah? I want you to go outside. Yeah? Get a bucket of water. Yeah? And clean that car till I can eat my dinner off it, all right? Yeah. In fact, you might as well start now. Yeah, might as well. Oh, hello, silly love. Hiya. Look, I can't stop her. Got an important job on. Oh, you better get off then. You all right, Mr. Baldwin? Yeah. What a lager, is it? And one microwave and all. Don't start. Look, I'm not going to forget it, so you can forget open. Look, they're the way, aren't they? The way on the running mirror. I can't deny it till they get back. Yeah, but you could go see Rita Baker. Love. She could get in the flat. I already have it. She said no. Oh, well, it's last papers we've got from her hey, shop, hey, then. Hey, just keep your voice down. She's only sat there, isn't she? Well, you're saying you can't do old. You were crafty enough to get rid of it, weren't you? Thought you could do something if you used your initiative. Hey, I love it. Thanks, Betty. Start up. <coughs> Betty, you yeah? know uh, Mr. Wonderful that Sandra was telling us about? Yeah. Over there. Oh, that's him, is it? Oh, I'm very pleased for her. <laughs> now, ladies, take a last look at this tired old body. I'm taking it in for a service. You won't recognise me when I get back. Back from where? Not plastic surgery. No, Gloria, not plastic surgery. Stella Rigby has talked me into going with her to one of these health farms. Oh, my God. Oh, that'll be a challenge for them, won't it? Thank you, Miss Todd. When's this, then? Oh, not for a couple of weeks yet. Give me time to get used to the mm, idea. Better love, better. Bet. Can, can you do us a big favour? Oh, Jack, you don't want to borrow one of my frocks, not again. No, 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 no. This summer come up dead important. I need to slip away for about ten minutes. <clears throat> I still don't know. Well, there are dangers. I mean, if you get a solicitor in, it can turn very nasty, not to say costly. Mind you, if Alan's sitting tight and you want him out, there's not a lot else you can do. Well, do I want him out? I mean, I know I say I do, but there's part of me that says, while he's still in the yard, well, we still have some sort of contact, don't we? Mm -hmm. I'll stand here with you, if you don't mind, Vera. Don't mind at all. Oh, don't think my husband had welcome being interrupted just now. He seems to be really engrossed in his conversation. Right. No matter what happens, don't you blame me. You are. You want your microwave, don't you, right? You've got to get it. Hey. Morning, Bobby. Uh, Rita about then, is she? Um, no, she's gone to the Rovers. Oh, uh, she told me I'd be calling, though. How do you mean? To pick up the, 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 what do you call it, the, the microwave out of Mavis's flat so I can get it seen to before they get back, you know. No, she didn't say anything now. Oh, she must have forgot. Anyway, I may as well pick it up while I'm here, so if you open up, I'll have it out of your way in no time, love. I suppose... Does Rita know about this? Oh, hi, yeah, yeah, you've got a key for upstairs, haven't you? 
I don't know. Mm. Uh, here, here, if we have. Well, uh, don't let me disturb your old manny's love. Well, I can ring Rita at the Rovers. Ah, ah. Well, the the the, the bar phone is on the blink. I, I heard Bet say something about it earlier, love. Oh. Mm. Right then, go on. Much obliged. Uh, up here, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And whose car's that then? Oh yeah. I just thought I'd have a walk round in my dinner hour. In the hope of seeing me, like. Go on, admit it. I won't be embarrassed. I thought you were supposed to be some sort of executive, not an executive car washer. Oh, and let any of them in there get their hands on this. Come on. You're not trying to tell me it's yours. Well, of course it is. Go on. It's true. So why didn't you take me out in it the other night instead of that other one? Well, <laughs> gets bored in using it all the time, doesn't it? Uh, Look, uh, I'm seeing you tomorrow, right? Yeah. Well, we'll use it then. I'll pick you up in it. I still don't believe you. We'll wait till tomorrow, see what you believe then. Yeah, I will. Who's that? Oh, uh, it's just somebody that fancies me. <laughs> Look like she fancied the car more than you. Teddy! Teddy! Teddy, come and get this door for us, will you? This baby thing's killing me. How do you manage to get your hands on that again? You never mind, but if you see your mother this afternoon, tell her what I've done with you. All for her sake, just to keep her happy. All the stuff I'm moaning on at you, you mean? Of course, it might take time to find a new manageress, you know. I mean, I hope you're not going to be leaving me high and dry. Well, I've got my own plans to consider now. Oh, well, be like that. I mean, I can always run it myself if it comes to it. Close it down altogether. Or sell it. I haven't quite made my mind up yet. That's why I wanted to have a look at these. Perhaps one of your staff might have a cup of tea. They don't appear to have anything else to do. She said nothing much different. Look, I can ask her if she'll keep you on here, if you'd rather. No, I want to go with you. Hey, shall I take this? Shall I pretend to trip over and pour it down her neck? I don't think so, Felix. Pity. Will you? Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mrs. Pierce, isn't it? It is two of those that aren't my friends, yes. No, I was wondering whether you'd uh, like to work more hours, Mrs. Pierce. You know, take on uh, more responsibility, which, of course, in turn, would bring more money with it. Oh, no, I wouldn't. What I'd like is for things to stop as they are, because we were quite all right until you came here laying the law down. <coughs> hey, oh. now, before you get the wrong idea, us coming in together is purely coincidental. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Now, do you expect us to believe that? Do we believe this, Mr. Roberts? I believe everything my wife tells me, otherwise my life wouldn't be worth living. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. Hey. Uh, listen, do you want to get off, love? Oh, can I? Ah, of course you can. Oh, great, I'll just go and get the car. Oh, well, there's no rush. Did you uh, have a nice time in town, then? Me? Hmm. Oh, no, no, I'm back at dinner time. Actually, I called into the Rovers to see if you were there. Well, I were. Yes, I know, I saw you. Didn't disturb you. Seemed to be really engrossed in your conversation with Rita Fairclough. Yeah, well, she wanted a bit of advice. <laughs> what again? Poor woman, she must have some problems. Oh, well, Mr. Roberts, you told me to remind you about, you know, Mrs. Hargreaves' oh, bread order. Oh, you told him. Let's go. I'm just telling you. Yeah, I know about it. I know, yeah, I know, about, it, I know about it. Yeah. Uh, you know. Look, I don't know what you're trying to suggest. Suggest? I'm trying to suggest anything. I mean, you're old friends. I understand that going through a bad time at the moment. I understand that, you know. Yeah, well, she just wanted me to. No, no, Al. Come on. Wouldn't be fair to tell me Rita's confidence is that's just between the two of you. <sighs> tell you some up for now. I don't really fancy cooking tonight. You don't feel like taking me out somewhere nice, do you? Uh, why not? Oh, what a fit. <laughs> You are good to me, you know. Rita Fairclough doesn't know what she's missing. <laughs> Shall I back Sarah over you? Maybe you like. Do you want my cartoon thing? No. You got some reading to do from school. No, my cousin didn't give us any we were doing shapes. Yeah, well, you can clean these shapes up before I break my neck on them. Go. What? Oh. I'm, uh, I'm not calling it a bad time, am I? <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I'm getting these. Uh, uh, half a bit for me and a pint for me, husband, because he deserves it for once. Oh, fair enough. Ask where he's done. Oh, you can ask. He's got to be microwave now. 
Mind you, we spoke with lots in first place. Anyway, I'm quite willing to overlook it now it's made a menu. <laughs> Hello, Bear, just a half, please. You haven't by any chance ever been to a health farm, have you? Uh, never, never, no. Why, uh, do what I need to? No, I'm just wondering what goes on. Be a lot of taking your clothes off, I should imagine. Bound to be. And saunas and jogging and eating carrots. Are you thinking of going? So it seems. Do you think they might have a bar? Uh, very much doubt it. They know smoking as well, I suppose. Yep. Still, I should survive, so long as there's a good off-license and a decent chippy in vicinity. <laughs> I've just been to your house. Your Terry said I might find you in it. Oh, yeah? Yes. Oh, now, I've just been hearing about the cheap trick that you played on Jenny, telling her I said it was all right for you to go up in Mavis's flat and take that mic away when you know perfectly well I said no such thing. Perhaps she misunderstood. Oh, no, she didn't. She understood all right. Well, I'll tell you what I'd call what you've done. I'd call it a confidence trick. That's what I'd call hey, it. Hey, now, You come sure on. up. In fact, it's next door to burglary. Except that you've conned your way instead of breaking a window. Yeah, but it wasn't their property in first place. Dead right. No, it was mine. That's the whole point. Absolutely. The whole point, Vera, was that that microwave was in Mavis's flat and you'd no right to go and take it. Anyway, it's now to do with me now. What Mavis and Derek do about it when they come back, that's up to them. I just wanted you to know what I think about the way you behave. Ah, Katera. I wouldn't take that much notice of a lovey. No wonder Alan Bradley left her. Would you like to be saddled with her? No. Hey, it's just jealousy. She's just jealous of couples that are happy. Do you know, I don't really want you to go, Gail, really. I don't, I don't think you do, really, do you? Well, I wouldn't have chosen to. No. Well, then. I take it you've not found anybody else yet, then? Oh, all that palaver interviewing people, they're never knowing if I can really rely on them. Look, why don't we just forget our little differences and go back to where we were? Including the sandwich round? Oh, if it's that important to you, I suppose so. Well, summit I did off my own bat and I've proved it works, so... Yes, it's important to me. Oh, well, go on, then. Is Sarah all right? Yeah, Nicky's looking after her. Unless you don't want me here. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just saying to Gail, I think we ought to go back to square one and forget all this silly talk about her leaving. I'll, I'll just keep my nose out of it and she can get on with running the place. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Depends. Oh, what on? Are you also agreeing that I get a share of any profits from the sandwich round? Oh, Gail, I'm, I mean, you're not making things easy, are you? Uh, come on, love. Because I'm not coming back unless I do. You know? No. Do you know, Gail, when I first took you on, I thought, what a nice, easy-going young woman. And now all I can say is, I've never met anybody so stubborn. No, neither have I. Sorry. Oh, all right then, rather than all this interviewing and advertising. Anyway, I'm going to be late for my badminton night. I'll, uh, I'll be in touch. I hope I haven't interfered with your domestic arrangements. No, no, not at all. Ta-ra, then. Um, Ta-ra, You okay getting yeah. out? Okay, Ta-ra. <laughs> hey, look, that's great. Well done. Oh, come on, you must be pleased with yourself. Yeah, I suppose I am. Well, we've got everything now. We've got the best of both worlds. We? Well, okay, you, uh, you have. Let's see to the kids, shall we? Grateful for your help with them, nothing else. Are you all ready for Christmas, then? Oof, as far as I'm concerned, they can cancel it. You're only saying that. Oh, no, I'm not. I mean it. You mean you won't be putting a big red coat on and a white beard and going round all your workers giving them presents? You're joking. I give them a present every week of the year. A wage packet they never earn. Give them a nice warm place to sit in and that, and they want a bonus at Christmas. Do you know, I believed in Father Christmas till I was ten years old. Oh, late developer, were you? No, I wasn't that, but I did. I believed in him till I was ten. And then I went in a grotto in co-op. And I recognised the one they had there as Frank Jenkins, who used to deliver our coal. Come and sit on my knee, little girl, he said. I said, no chance. I've heard my mum talk about you. <laughs> I am very glad that Sandra's met Pete, you know. I mean, I honestly am very glad for him. But? Well, it's obviously becoming an every night job, isn't it? Which means our girls' night out have gone for a burden. Why don't you get her to ask Pete if he's got a friend? Also unmarried. Also as thoughtful and considerate as he is. There's no harm in asking, though. I have to ask, I've looked back. And I don't think there's another one of them in the whole of England. <laughs> Here's to the next few days of freedom. Are you on holiday? Better than that. 
Baldwin's going away, and what's more, he's going away by train. So? I'm well, left with a jack, aren't I? No, is that what he said? Oh, Terry! Oh. Uh, you want me, Mr. Baldwin, do you? No, not the moment. You're all right, but I want you nine o'clock tomorrow morning outside the fact. Uh, yeah, nine, yeah. Uh, just to take me to the station and the car stays... Yes, yes, it's understood. <laughs> as long as you realise it. Right. See you. Ta-da. Well, doesn't sound like he was giving you permission to use it. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. No? I thought you said he was read out on checking the mileage and all that. Likes to keep his eye on it. Likes to think he's smart that way, doesn't Mr. Baldwin? Yeah, well, he is, isn't he? Well, let's wait and see, shall we? Wait till he gets on that train, and then let's see what happens. <laughs> so, have you heard from him then? Yeah, I had a postcard with a picture of the Eiffel Tower on it. Well, Mavis was always very original in that area, you know. So when they get him back? Oh, any time now. Always assuming that the European air traffic controllers aren't showing their usual concern for travellers by pulling plugs on them. Oh, what, at this time of the year with the holiday rush over? <laughs> you must be joking. <laughs> Deirdre? Mm -hmm. Will you tell me something? If I can. Well, I don't mind people browsing if they've not better to do, but I wouldn't have thought it was exactly your scene. Our teeny bopper section. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. I just want to make sure it's in there before I buy it. Make sure what's in there? <sighs> Life-size pull-out picture of Bross oh. for our Tracy. Only I promised I'd get her a copy if I were passing. Only trouble is, I forgot the name of the damn magazine. I think it was called Jumper, Bumper, something, but it could just as easily have been called Squawk or Wriggle. Is that what you're looking for? Ah, is there a picture in it? <gasps> in livid colour. Oh, thanks, Rita. What's the damage? Would you believe a quid? Not easily, no. Well, that's what I said to the salesman who flogged them to me, but he's quite right. They're going like hotcakes, just like he said they would. The price we pay at the piece. I'll see you all. Good on. Ooh, when's it to be, then? What? Well, the end of the world, by the look of your face, love. Oh, sometime tonight, probably. Why, what's tonight, love? My mum's going to school to see me teachers. Oh, now what have you done? More of a case of what I've not been doing, really. Oh? Parent teachers' evening. Oh. Now, do you know, in my day, I mean, that's back in the dark ages, of course, we didn't have parent teachers' evenings. You were lucky. Yeah. I think we were, really. Oh, hi. I uh, return with thanks. Oh, you could have given me back at work. Oh, I'd almost have passed your door anyway, and I fancy the walk. No. You ready? Oh, well, uh, can you just give me a minute to finish putting my face on? Sure. Come in. So, uh, how did we go last night, then? Smashing. We had a terrific time. Oh, look at you. The highlight of my evening was Percy Sugden. Explaining why if somebody called I could listen to somebody called Monty, we could have won the war by 1943. He ought to have a government health warning, should Percy, tattooed across his forehead. It could only be an improvement. <laughs> and, uh, how was the lovely Pete? Great. Oh, I see. A bit special then, is he, this one? Just a bit. Oh, yeah. And, uh, what's so special about him then? Oh, all sorts of things. I mean, the way we laugh at same things. And the way he treats me. And, you know, most of all, apart from everything else, the fact that he's so polite. Oh, no, I don't mean in a daft way either. No, I mean, what I mean is, he's just one of them fellas that makes you feel good to be a woman. And that because you are a woman, you've every right to be treated just that bit more gently. <laughs> do you know what I'm trying to say, Glove? Oh, I do love you. Mind you, it's a long time since I've come across one like that round here. Mm. Well, sounds as if you've found yourself a man in a million. Well, I don't know about that. But he certainly makes a pleasant change from the sort of fellow I've been used to in recent years. Ooh, you and me both. So, serious is it then? Well, it's a bit early days for that, wouldn't you say? Well, why for God's sake? Glow, love. In case you happen to have forgotten, I do still happen to have a husband about somewhere. Even if it's preferably a long way from here. And, uh, does Pete know that? Of course. And? Oh, couldn't care less. Well... Not when I told him what had happened. <laughs> so, uh, what's your problem then? Well, part of my problem is, when you suddenly meet somebody like Pete, after you've been used to the likes of Ronnie, you're inclined to take your time a bit, you know. What, in case, sir, uh, you wake up and find all you've been doing is dreaming it, right? Now you're getting it, kid. <laughs> now you're getting it. Right then, boss. Give my love to the smoke. Yeah, I'll do that. So, what time tomorrow? I don't know. 
Uh, sometime in the afternoon, I suppose. Right. Oh, and uh, the jag goes back to the flat, right? Where else, boss? See you. Have a nice day. Yeah, I'll do that. You know what the trouble with the motor car is, don't you? Well, no doubt you're going to tell me, person. The effect they have on folk. You know, it's worse than that stuff Dr. Zettler used to give to Mr. Hyde. Put a man behind the wheel and in five minutes flat, he's a raving monster. That's your experience, sir. Oh, damn it, that crosses the mind every day. I've had to put more than one of them in his place, you know. Uh, I bet you really tell him, don't you, Percy? Oh, I have been commended for it. I'm more than once for the stand I've taken. So, really, you're one of the unsung heroes of road safety, Mr. Sugden? Don't be sarky. I wasn't being. I admire you for it. And, as a pedestrian, I'm deeply grateful. It's just that your analogy had a little bit suspect, you know. My what? Analogy. What you said about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll was Mr. Hyde. The two sides of the same coin, so to speak. You know, that's, uh... That's something else you students are very good at, isn't it? When you're not out demonstrating about one thing or the other. What? Putting fault right. Usually about something you know nothing at all about. What is it about Percy Sugden that makes even a hardened pacifist want to grab him by the tash and throttle him? <laughs> what do you mean you can't meet me tonight? Jason's parent teacher's evening. I can't afford to miss it, Pete, not this year. So? What do you mean? I can see you afterwards. Well, you sure you don't mind? <laughs> of course not. I'm going to pick you up from the school, if you like. No, don't do that. I mean, God knows what time I'll be out of there. Look, I'll tell you what, why don't I meet you in here about half past nine, OK? Right, thanks, Vera. Hey, he's a new one, isn't he? Well, not all that new, Vera, but still in good working order from where I've heard. <laughs> I can say that. What's his name? Uh, Pete. Yeah. Well, he's one I won't kick out of my bed on a cold night. No, I don't suppose you would, Vera. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we are awful talking about folk. Mine's like the man said, there's only one thing worse than being talked about, and that's not being talked about. Still, there's not much chance of that happening around here. Are you all right, sir? As long as a pound made to do this. Tell me something, will you? If you can. Difficult, is it, to uh, turn back the mileage clock on a motor? Well, it depends, doesn't it? On what? <laughs> on the motor, for starters. Well, uh, what about a Jag, say? Not all that easy. But well, not impossible, right? Well, so why not? Not when you know what you're doing. And you do, right? Of course I do. Why? Well, I was just wondering if you'd do us a favour. Do oh, I? What kind of favour? Like, uh, turning back the mileage on a certain Jag I know. About 50-odd miles or so. Oh. Like Mike Baldwin's Jag, perhaps. What do you say? I say you must be out your tiny mind. Will you do it, though? Sorry. It's going to be worth a fiver to me. Oh, at least. Should even think of doing something that stupid. Oh, Kev, I'm sorry I'm late. Mr. Roberts was late getting back. Oh, it's all right. Have you ordered out to eat? No, not yet. Just waiting for you, wanna? Should we go and find it? So? No way, mate. No way what? Doesn't matter. Two turkey stuffing oh. for Brad. Right, Rita? Oh, thanks, love. Doing your own errands today, are you? Well, it's just that we're that busy, so I told Gina that if she did the outers, I'd do the locals myself. Oh, and I believe you changed your mind about setting up shop on your own. Oh, who told you that? A little bird. Then he told you wrong, didn't it? It still might happen. There's just a few things I've got to sort out first, that's all, but I'll get there. You just watch my smoke. Well, I'm very glad to hear it, because it's one thing I do admire. It's somebody who not only has good ideas, but can make it happen on their own if they have to. Mm. Them being what you might call the operative words, eh, Rita? Which word? Yeah. On your own? Well, not entirely on your own, surely. I mean, you'll have Brian to back you up, won't you? Will I? I wonder. See you, Rita. Yeah. Try, love. Guess who? <laughs> Babies! <laughs> oh, hello, love. Oh! Ain't about time too. I was beginning to think you've decided to stay in Paris another week. Well, don't think we didn't think about it. But Paris isn't exactly what you'd call the cheapest city in Europe. No, no, I believe so. I've heard it's getting nearly as expensive as London. Yes. Now, what are you doing here, Derry? I mean, I thought the plan was that maybe she was going to leave you in Paris when she left, under one of them bridges. <laughs> Hello, Rita. How are you, Derry? 
Très bien, merci. <laughs> that good, eh? <laughs> Must be something to do with the air in Paris. You did get into the fresh air, did you? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> now, I can just as easily put kettle on, but if you prefer for your husband to carry you over your threshold, oh. I shall oh. be the least offended. Are you sure? Oh, positive. Oh, oh, all right, come on, let's go. Well, we'll see the bit. Yes. Oh, oh and welcome oh. back. Oh, it's lovely. Both mm. of you. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. for you? Mrs. Wilton? Oh! Oh, Derek! <laughs> oh, Derek, look! I say, where'd they come from? Oh, from Rita, aren't they lovely, though? Very nice. <laughs> a very nice thought, too. Yes, I must go down and thank her. Yeah, well, thank her for me, will you, while you're yes. about it? In fact, I'll, I'll take her present down as well. I won't be long. <laughs> See you not. No. Oh. Thanks, love. Ta-da. Oh, thank you. The flowers are lovely. Oh, you shouldn't have. They must have cost a small fortune. Well, between you and me, I got them off this fella on Fruit Market. Only we're just closing, so let me have them half price. <laughs> oh, a likely story. Anyway, this is for you from Derek and me. Oh, Mavis, thank you. Oh, it seems a shame to open it, doesn't it? Mm. Nobody wraps a present quite like the French, do they? Unless you got this from Duty Free. No, we did not. The Chandelier say no less. Oh, pardon, me moi. So how have things been with you while we've been away? Oh, just about the same, love. No word, then? Not so much as a peep. I am sorry, Rita. I felt quite sure everything would be back to normal by the time we got back. Yeah, well, you do have daft ideas like that, don't you? Mm -hmm. When you're in love in Paris and on your honeymoon. Well, it's, it's very French. It's Limoges, in fact. Limoges. Hmm? Limoges. It's like the sort of French Stoke on Trent. Oh. Well, it's, it's very nice. Thank you. So, where are you off then tonight? Tramps, I suppose, are you to meet Charles and Di? No, that's tomorrow night. Tonight we're slumming it over to Liverpool to this hot little club, I know. It's a long way to go to a club. It's not far, the pool, if you've got the right wheels. Oh, your boss, as you mean. Oh, so he's told you, as he, you're Kevin. How cosy the way, never to have any secrets from one another. He's going to have your guts for garters, Baldwin, you know, if he finds out. Well, we'll just have to make sure he doesn't find out, won't we? In fact, I'd be grateful if you'd pass that thought on to that husband of yours. Only what I told him earlier on today was supposed to be for his ears only. Oh, and while you're doing that, tell him something else from me, will you? What? Like, not to worry if he's been lying awake feeling bad all afternoon, because he wouldn't help a mate out in distress. Because I've managed very nicely without his help, thank you. You know, I think that's where I'd go for my honeymoon in Paris. Even when I have a garage, like. Have you ever been? No. Why would I be disappointed? Well, I suppose that'd be Ben, wouldn't it? And what? Who are you going on honeymoon with, eh? Uh, <laughs> no, Paris is all right, but for me, it's got to be Venice every time. Oh. Julie Christie and Donald Sutherland in Don't Look Now. That old place in Venice, didn't it? Oh, it stinks, though, in Venice. You know, with them canals. <laughs> Greatly exaggerated that in my experience, and still arguably the most beautiful city on the earth. Huh? Oh, well. Next time I'm thinking of getting married, I'll know where to go, won't I? You better get your skates on, then. Oh, yeah? Well, the entire place is sinking, you know, until we're doing... Now, isn't that always the way, though, eh, with a good place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. What are you doing here tonight? Why? Club members only tonight, then, is he? No, I just thought you weren't seeing Sandra till tomorrow night, because it's a parent-teacher's thing. I'll meet Renee after she's finished. 
Well, in that case, what can I get you? Half a bitter. Yeah. Well, he must be stark raving mad. And uh, then again, he always was one of our city. Yeah. Well, God help him if our friend Baldwin <laughs> finds out, that's all I'm going to say. Well, it serves him right if he does, I think. Yeah, and me. I mean, it's just asking for it that, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, using the boss's car when he's back to one thing. But messing about with the clock as well whilst you're at it. And if you had an ordinary boss who was halfway decent, I'd agree with you. But it's not, is it? It's Mike Baldwin, who yeah. in some previous incarnation was almost definitely Vlad the Impaler or something. <laughs> you see, that was the main attraction for Teddy getting that job in the first place. What boss? So he could get his hands on the wheel of that jag. It's only a matter of time before he did something daft. Uh, if he's done something daft. Oh, come on, Kev. I told you what you told me in the show. Yeah. Well, all that could be for my benefit, really, couldn't it? Your benefit? Yeah. Well, he's bound to know the first person Sally would tell would be me, right? He just happened to be the one who refused to turn back the clock for him. So for all we know, he could be at home now, sulking, watching telly or something. Well, he could be. And for all we know, Dolly Parton might well turn out to be a fella who's done too much weightlifting. But as I know both parties, neither of them doesn't seem very likely, does it, really? What's the matter? Run out of petrol, have we? Overeating a bit after that streak along the motorway, you know. Let it cool down a bit, I think. And it is the engine we're talking about, is it? Well, what else? <laughs> well then, maybe. What should we drink to? How about love? Why not? Love. L'amour. <laughs> L'amour. <laughs> mm. And thank you, Derek. What for? Oh, for a lot of things. For a lovely honeymoon. But most of all, I suppose, for making me feel the way I do tonight. Happier than I've ever felt in my whole life, really. You and me both, Mavis. Believe me. Oh, Derek. Do you love me? Love you too, Mavis. Oh, I wouldn't try to make you a good wife. Well, I do realise that I'm not much of a catch. I mean, I'm no oil painting and I'm prone to panic and I get things out of all proportion. Shut up, Mavis. Pardon? I said, shut up. Rover's return. Oh, hi. Yeah, of course he is. Pete, it's for you. Oh, <laughs> right, come on, you lot. Let me see your bottoms. <laughs> you know, sometimes you've got no homes to go to. <laughs> it's not as homes as bothers as Betsy. It's what's facing us when we get there. Ah, yeah, well, that's your problem. I mean, mine is. I shan't get to mine until the last of these glasses have been washed. Come on, aye, get some done. And be quick. Nah. Ta ta. Oh, all right. She's only just this minute gone. Oh. I don't know what some of them find to talk about at these parent teachers' nights. I don't, honestly. So she'll not be bothering then. Well, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Not at this time. Ah, well. So, uh, bit of an ogre then, was it? This will be of yours. More of a wally, really. I mean, you've heard of them with feet of clay, right? Right. Well, the trouble with Colin was, he was clay all the way up. I mean, his idea of the big night out was settling down in front of the telly with an exotic pizza. <laughs> Sounds like a real swinger. Oh, he was. Mind you, I think it was the modelling that finally finished us off. Modelling? When I told him that I was getting a portfolio together to get into modelling, I mean, he went mad. Started raving on about how he wasn't having me flaunting myself for other fellas to go up at. I mean, honestly, anybody would have thought I'd told him I was thinking of taking up stripping or something. So, uh, bye-bye Colin, right? If it was only that easy. Well, what do you mean? You're separated now. Oh, we are. Trouble is, he doesn't seem able to accept that somehow. He's still hanging about after me. I see, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what happened to the modelling career then? Oh, I'm still dead keen. The problem is, getting a start, though. Well, um... 
Perhaps I can help out there. You? Well, I am in the rat trade, you know. I mean, in our line of business, there's uh, always room for a girl as good-looking as yourself. Oh, Terry, I'd be dead grateful if you could. Well, uh, you just leave it to me, eh? Let's see what we can do. Great. Listen, I'll tell you what. We can go back to my place if you like. Have a coffee or something. Something I've never been able to refuse, isn't that? A coffee. <laughs> So can you manage the rest of them, Betty? Oh, yes. You go and catch your bus, love. See you tomorrow. Oh, thanks, Betty. Okay. Better have not missed it already, of course. Oh. And if you have, what? What? Missed your bus. Oh, I woke, love. Well, it doesn't sound like a very bright idea to me, that this time of night. Well, it probably isn't, but then it's Hobson's choice, isn't it? Only, uh, I'm going your way, you know, if you could use a lift. Oh, well, don't you mind? Of course not. We'll be daft. Come on. Oh, thanks. Night, Betty. Hello, Betty. Good night, Betty. Night. So, when will I see you again, then? Well, that depends on the diary, really, and uh, whether Mike wants me to shoot down to London to sort out this currency cock-up they've made at one of our export outlets in Soho. But, uh, if I can manage to dump that one on him, well, uh, perhaps I'll give you a bell tomorrow night, eh? Great. Good night, Terry. Good night, gorgeous. Oh, no! Rita, have you ever thought that... I try not to think, love. It gives me brain ache. That Hamlet is about two people driven to badness and death by the toxic corruption of personal values. Not a lot, no. That's what you said in the programme notes. Oh. How was it? Not bad. It's poor old Ophelia I feel sorry for her when she's driven round twist. Sin always makes me cry. Well, that means there were two of us blubbing last night, then. Why? Why? What's happened? Oh, I got this little billet doux from your dad. Did he fetch it? Oh, no. Sent his minion to do his dirty work. Well, so what? He just says he's been moving out the yard. Oh, yeah. All very businesslike. Well, why are you so upset? Now you don't have to go to the solicitors, do you? Well, it's the way it's written. Dear Mrs. Fairclough, like I'm a stranger. It's like we were never... Yeah, well, I suppose he just thought it best to keep it formal. Look, this is about a business arrangement, not your private lives. You can't separate the two, Jenny. That's not terminating a business arrangement. That's terminating us. I thought that happened when you moved out. I never had the locks changed on the door. Okay. Look, perhaps he's been called out of town, love it. Where to? Well, maybe he's got a, an elderly mum and dad who's not been so well. Anything could have happened, love. No, he's gone off me. I can feel vibes. Oh, Good morning. How are you? Well, how did you get on last night? Oh, shouldn't we ask? Why? Oh, I only interrupted a romantic tete-a-tete -tete when I called round. Oh, no, it was nobody. Just this fella I know. He, he popped in. Don't mm. you believe it. A right sparkle she had in her eyes. Oh, well, at least one of us is making progress with a love life. <laughs> Do you know, one of the compensations of my job is being surrounded by such lovely faces. I want you to put the kettle on. Can I not pass on a compliment to you lovely ladies? With, unless you think I've got some ulterior motive? Hmm? No. no. Oh, I see you've joined the mother's meeting, Jack. Do you not want to encourage friendly staff relations, boss? Oh, I do, Jack, I do, yes. So seeing as you're one of the girls, I've had put in the kettle, I'm making us a cup of tea. Uh, no, it's okay, Alec, I'll do it. Get it over, it must be a right whim. Oh, <laughs> well, husband of this bit of stuff, Baldwin's knocking off. How'd you make that out? Well, who goes round scribbling messages on cars? I mean, a real fella would have thumped him in God. Oh. And why would, would you, Jack, do if he found out you've been having it away with someone, Vera? Good question, Ted. I might just do some research on the subject. Well, I think all things disgusting myself. When you get to Mike Baldwin's age, you should be able to comport yourself with a bit of dignity. Morning, girls. Hi, love. <laughs> Oh, you do realise we're all making a big assumption, eh? What do you mean, assumption? That it's him. Oh, well, he's claiming Jack. Yes, but he's not the only one what drives it, is it? What, Terry? Don't be daft. He only does business messages. Anyway, if anybody's learnt his lessons going around with married women, he has. Gary's reckon a car's going to be ready today after all. But let's hope they make a good job of it. I'll pick it up later on, then. Still puzzles me, you know. What's that, then, boss? 
Who the so-and-so is that did it? Must be a few hundred contenders, eh? You flatter me, son. I'd leave it well alone if I was you, Governor. Could be asking for more trouble. I mean, last time it was under the car, it got I'll done. I'll pay you to run errands, sunshine. Not give me advice, all right? As you like it. So how's married life then, Mavis? Well, it's amazing how quickly you get used to it. I mean, I thought everything would be different, but it's not. <laughs> There's not much point doing it then. No, what I mean is I, I thought you'd feel to be a completely different person, but you don't. You just feel like you're more of the person that you were. Anyway, everything is very much better when you're sharing it with somebody, even just watching the telly. Yeah, till she wants to watch Dynasty, then he wants to watch Match of the Day. Well, we don't have disputes like that, because Derek's not a great sports fan. No, I didn't think he would be. Right, I'd best get going. Thanks. All right, bye. Thanks very much, though. See you. Bye, Brian. Yeah, bye. See you. <coughs> bye. You know, it's very true, is that? Yeah, well, I feel sorry for those wives whose husbands only want to watch every sporting fixture on the box. I mean, Derek and me were really in tune because we both like a good play and we like old films and <laughs> Derek's a great Humphrey Bogart fan. I meant what you said about things being better when you share them with someone. Yes, well, I mean, that's not an original observation, is it? It's more an obvious fact of life. Yeah, but it only becomes more obvious when you're not actually doing it. That letter's really upset you, hasn't it? Well, it certainly hasn't made me feel like running barefoot through the cornfields with a simpering smile on me chops, no. Oh, damn him. Damn him, I just wish I'd never got involved with him in the first place. No, you don't. When Len died, you, you closed down a whole part of yourself. It was like you'd shut up the rooms in an empty house. And then with Alan, it was like you'd opened all the doors and windows again. You're a sentimental devil when you want to be, aren't you, Wilton? Well, I'm not ashamed to admit it. There's nothing wrong with having feelings. Yeah, well, if you don't have feelings, you don't get hurt. Well, that's fine. If you want to be a machine. Hey, I love it. Tied up. He's not been in, I don't suppose. Look, I'd come and told you if he had, love. Fellas, why do we bother? Question. Well, why don't you go home and put your feet up for an hour? I mean, you don't want to look all peculiar, you know, if it does call round. Oh, he won't. I just wish I knew what I'd done wrong. Mm. I'd rather he'd said than just disappear. All right, to well, then I'll see you at morning. Oh, you know, you can manage to find a bit of a smile to paste on your face by then. Oh, wow, Alec. Well, it creates a bad atmosphere. That wasn't very nice, Alec. Look, I'm a landlord. Folk come into a pub expecting to be cheered up, not reminded how ruddy miserable they are, and I'd be very grateful if staff had kindly leave their problems at home. <laughs> oh, I only wish I could. Hey, Jack, answer me some help. I plead the Fifth Amendment, Vera. No, listen, what would you do if you found with another man? <laughs> Check his guide off. <laughs> He's the right kid of him, you know. Mind you, that's one that reasons I married him for a sense of humor. All right, what was the other? Well, he <laughs> want his money. <laughs> <laughs> Get us another scotch, will you, Jack? Right, Mike. Oh, where's, where, where's Glory? She's gone through to the back. Why do women have to be so flaming emotional over every little thing? Hey, how's my honourable number one son going then? Ain't he still a seat on the board, is he? Oh, he's got a long time to go till he gets here. Say, 20 years? Well, don't you let his mother hear you say that. She thinks you've got every faith in him. Well, perhaps I was exaggerating a bit then, say, 10 years. <laughs> Oh, oh, right. so what? Well, there goes one of the jammiest beggars alive. Shut up, will you? Why? What's Doxy pulled now? Oh, Curly reckons. You reckon, you mean? We both oh. reckon that he's got away with blue murder pinning that graffiti job on my board. Oh, where else is it down to? Well, of course, that message on the car could just as easily be meant for Terra. Mm. Nothing more likely, in fact. You got proof? Oh, it's what you might call an educated guess. But there's nobody here more educated than me, cuddly little brain box. I was just extrapolating a theory. Ooh, sounds painful. <laughs> I'm half as painful as it would be for him if you're right and his boss finds out. Do you know, it's disgusting today, the vandalism. They don't give a damn for nothing, you know. Not brought up with your standards, eh, Jack? You're dead right there, Mike. Well, I mean, what you want to do is find out who this scumbag is and send our telly around and lean on him. Because he's got a plenty of muscle, you know. What, show me your biceps test? Look, Go the on. best thing that Mr. Baldwin can do is forget the whole episode. I mean, the bloke's done him a favour, really, hasn't he? How'd you make that happen? Well, you get your jack back looking like you. The insurance coughs up and you're laughing, aren't you? Hello, Pear. What 
are you doing now? I just felt like being on my own. I've had enough of Michelle Dobson's sex life for one day. This is all my fault, isn't it? What is? Putting my problems on you. You should be going on with your own life, not getting bogged down with mine. What happens between you and me, Dad, is part of my life. You're still a child, really, Jenny. I mean, you're so young and been through so much already. You shouldn't have to go through this as well. I'm not a child. Look, it's you I'm worried about. You and him. I don't want to see you both ending up miserable and lonely on your own. Well, there's not much danger of that as far as he's concerned. Hey, it won't last with her. If it was such a grand passion, then why isn't he living with her? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't like her cooking. Don't treat me like a kid. I know you still care about him. I think he still feels the same way about you. Point is, what are you going to do about it? Not a damn thing. It wasn't me who upset the flaming apple cart. Oh, so for the sake of your pride, you're prepared to see everything go down the drain? Maybe my pride's all I've got left, Jenny. Well, it won't keep you much company in your old age, will it? Look, Rita, he's moved out of this house. He's moving out the yard. Next, he's going to be moving out of our lives. As if you don't do something to stop him. Mr. Baldwin. Oh, well, helpful of you to listen out for me. It'd be even more helpful if you'd get off your fat bum and answer it. Hello, Baldwin. Oh, hello, Jenny. I've been trying to get in touch with you. Listen, I thought you said that husband of yours was working in Kuwait until Christmas. Oh, that's where you've been, is it? <laughs> yeah, I bet you got an all over suntan. Nope, can't picture on a camel. Listen, um,. So, he hasn't been in this area recently, then? Not since June. All right, Tyler. I'll uh, give you a bell sometime. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm a bit busy at the moment. Uh, see you, brown eyes. I'm sorry, Mavis. It's just not good enough. It's almost a quarter to two. Now it should have a perfectly valid reason. I take it she's aware I came home specially to take my wife out oh, to lunch. She's got a lot on her mind. She tramples on you, Mavis. Tramples? Uh, she's accused me in the past of using you as a doormat, but my goodness, when it comes to trampling, she beats me into a cocked hat any time. Derry, you talk as if I haven't got a mind of my own. Oh, Mavis. Look, if you will hold the fort for five minutes, I'll go and I'm make... Sorry, oh. I'm late. Look, you better get off now, Mavis. It's too late, Rita. I have a management meeting breaking out in 20 minutes. Well, I'll go and make us a quick sandwich. I don't want a quick sandwich. A quick sandwich was not the lunch I had anticipated. Rather than get indigestion, I'd prefer to do without. We'll have an early supper. Unless, of course, you're working overtime. I'm sorry, Rita. I'm afraid he gets a bit huffy when his tummy's neglected. No, 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 he's right. It was down to me to get back on time. Only Jenny were home, so we got talking. About Alan? Mavis, would you say I was a strong woman? Oh, definitely. It's something I've always admired about you and envied. <sighs> yeah. One of life's survivors, me, eh? Good old Rita. She'll cope. And mostly, by some miracle, I do. That is, until now. Oh, no, lovey, no. I'm not stopping. I want to get off home. I've had enough of this place for one day. <laughs> but before I go, there's just one question. I mean, this business, you know, with Pete and Sandra. Someone tells me you know more about it than you're cracking on. Well, only the same as you, that she's upset he's not been in touch. Oh, and she thinks he's seen somebody else. Is he? Why ask me? Well, because I think you've got a pretty good idea, lover. Look, I'm not stupid, love. I mean, but if I'm right, I don't like it, you know. I don't like it one little bit. Hope this won't take too long, boss. Only got a hot date on for tonight. Well, you'll have to put her on the back burner. Duty prevails. What duty? To me. Well, you have my total loyalty, Mr. Baldwin. You know that. I know. That's why you'll put my welfare, in fact, the factory's welfare, before your own selfish pleasures. You want me to do a spot of overtime, is that it? No. No, I've been thinking about what you said earlier. You're right, you know. 
Dead right. Smart lad. Thanks. Right about what? Well, I mean, uh, it was under the car this time. Next time, it could be the flat or my factory. Oh, it's only a figure of speech. You don't really reckon... I'm not could... prepared to take any risks, son. You never know what a nutter like that might do. So, listen, here's the battle plan. I look after the flat, you look after the factory. For how long? Well, till the morning. You want me to stay here all night? Yeah, patrolling the doors and the windows every hour. I know it's a rotten job, but someone's got to do it. I get paid overtime, I presume. I wouldn't insult you, son. You're a management trainee, not a night watchman. Learning the ropes from the floor up is something you'll thank me for one day when you're wearing my Gucci shoes. Now listen, um, I've left you some grub, there's a couple of cans of beer in the fridge. I've even left you a radio. Now you can't say I don't think of your welfare. See you in the morning. I got your letter. Right. Take it you found on the premises then? Uh, the, uh, the wheels are in motion, yeah. There's still the money you owe me. You'll get it back, don't worry, haven't forgotten. And there's Jenny. What about Jenny? Nothing wrong with her, is there? Look, uh, can I come in? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Doc, I've got the place to myself the whole night. There's no end of things you could get up to. Uh, trivial pursuits, uh, tiddlywinks, strip poker. <laughs> yes, I am a management executive. They'll trust no one else to do the job. No, <laughs> there isn't a couch in the office. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I suppose I could nip out for an hour or two. <laughs> what time do you finish work? Eleven. I'll be around. Keep it warm for me. <laughs> I was talking about my bedtime cocoa. <laughs> We're just not being fair to the girl. She's been through Rita. so much already, losing her mother, Look, losing you. I'm not going out of her life again. She knows that. Isn't that exactly what you have? Rita, we may have split up, but I'm still her dad. She can come and see me well, whenever she wants. She's no she faith in that. that, and you can't blame well, what her. What do you want me to do then, eh? Ask her to come and live with me, okay, fine, if that's what she wants. But when I've got a decent home to offer her, not this bloody dump. She's already got a home. Oh, which I broke up. Right? Was she worth it, Alan? Your bitter stuff. Oh, no. I'm not going to get involved in all that again. Oh, no. You can rip our lives apart. But I'm not entitled to ask if the price is what worth life? paying. Hey, come on. Please. You tell me. What did we have, eh? We were partners. We shared everything. No. I don't know what you're no, asking. No, no, no. We didn't share anything. I got what I was given. Because it was your house, your yard, your business and your money. You asked for my help. And how was it given? Grudgingly. Just like your emotions. Oh, I see. We're back to that, are we? Rita, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about warmth and affection. Men need that, you know. Do you think women don't? Well, I'm sorry, love. I never saw any evidence of it. It wasn't easy for me to give myself that way. After Lend, Rita, I'd... Rita. You've got to stop hiding behind the trauma of widowhood. I've had traumas too, you know. Lots of people have, but they don't end up bloody icebergs for the rest of their lives. Oh, well, that's cruel. You could have helped me, been more understanding. I tried, Rita. Uh -huh. I dare say we both. But let's face it, love, we had no common ground. We did once. Rita. All we ever had in common was the fact that we were both middle-aged and lonely. We were more than that, and you know it. We'd hell of a lot going for us. We used to laugh, make plans. We were a couple, a family. And now look at us. I was on the point of going to see a solicitor when I got your letter about the yard. And the money? Reed. What in God's if name are we doing, If you want to take Alan? legal action, then that's what you must do. I just want things to be do. as they were. Well, they can't be, I don't be, like what they? you've done, but I can live with it. I've lived through worse, provided you give her up. Are you asking me to come back? For Jenny's sake. Mind about Jenny. She's okay. Well, all right, then. For my sake. 
For your sake, you can't go on living here. I don't intend to. Look, all I'm asking is why don't we give it another go? What have we got to lose? Look, I know now, it, it, it wasn't all your fault. I'll be different. People always say that, Bob, don't We you? can learn from it's these mistakes. It's too late, Lisa. No, don't it's... you understand? It's too why? late. Why? Why? Because I don't believe you can go back. You asked me to marry you once. Mm -hmm. And I got it chucked back in my face, didn't I? I was wrong. Well, it doesn't matter. It's all water under the bridge, Amy. Anyway. Uh, just tell me. Just tell me what it is what you want. Just tell us what it'll take to get us on the right track. Marriage? If you want marriage, I'll marry you. Alan, I need you. I can't go on up here. I've seen the future. It terrifies me. Don't let's chuck everything away, please. If you ever had any feelings for me at all, just Rita, don't please, do this to yourself, Rob. Please come home. Please I give can't. me another chance, please. I can't, Rob. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. Well, I tell you, he's got big plans, Owen. I stick with him, I'll be all right. Oh, as long as he doesn't change his drinking habits when he comes into money. <laughs> No, letting him move out of the districts altogether, get a cool place like Mike Baldwin's. Well, you've been there, haven't you? What's it like, all subdued lights and black satin sheets? Hey, up, Betty, we don't usually see you in here at night, love you. Uh, Volunteering to do an extra stint, are you? No, I'm not. I'm just coming for a way of glory, that's all. In private. Yes, well, don't make it too long, because she's been paid to work, even if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I tried watching a play on the telly and I tried to read a book. It was no good. All I could think of was you and Sandra. Just what are you accusing me of, Betty? I'm making no accusations, love. I think I know what's going on. But you're the only one that knows the truth. We didn't plan it. It's the last thing I wanted to happen. But it just did. Oh, Betty, don't you think I feel lousy about it? What do you want me to do? Well, I want you to tell her. Look, if you don't, I'll have to. Ah, evening, Mr. Baldwin. Is he usual, Squire? Yeah. So they're making a trip here. It's a celebration in a funny sort of way. Oh, good news. Well, let's say I've solved the mystery. Hey, is this house to do with our Terry? Is he helping to solve it? He was instrumental, yes, Vera. Hey, did you hear that, Jack? Oh. I tell you, we're instrumental. Is that why we're late home? He didn't even come home for his tea. I shouldn't think he'd be home till breakfast. You mean be out all night? Hey, what kind of a job is that? Oh, very important. Something he should learn some very valuable lessons from. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. Oh, when my love comes tumbling down. Oh, it's you, Mr. Bowen. <laughs> yeah, of course I'm still here. No, nothing to report. No, there's no need for that, boss. You get your kip. You want to make sure I'm okay. Very thoughtfully, is that? <laughs> so, uh, what time do you think you'll be calling again? Could be half an hour. Could be an hour. Bloody hell. Oh, I said, uh, very well, Mr. Baldwin. Right. Good night. Hey, I'm doing well. Not a minute lost this last week. Hey, what are you after your Christmas bonus? <laughs> hey, you can tell she's been rushing though, can't you? She's forgot her tea. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> Any more cheek? Now, thump me in your glass, eh? Blimey, blimey, you noisy lot. Don't you know there's a night shift on? Hey, have you kipped here? Kipped? I'm on security, aren't I? Oh, is this the uh, rough job, then, is it? Night watchman. <laughs> Mugs wanted it, if you ask me. Don't be daft. This is part of his training, isn't it, Terry? One of Baldwin's little tests. Oh, yeah, sure. He never stops testing me. Yeah, that's right. And you haven't slipped up so far, have you? Ten out of ten every time, Mother dear. <laughs> See you, ladies. Right, love. Hey, make sure you get something to eat. Have no fear. Quick go to Jim's cafe and home to make the report out. <laughs> well, I reckon Baldwin must be going nuts. I mean, what was so special about last night? What is the to guard in this godforsaken hall, anyway? 
Well, it's payday tomorrow. Oh, yeah, all them bags of washers. Go on, I reckon you must be having your terry on. Well, Curly says as well we need to feed, you know, feed for his power fantasies. Don't be daft. No, he's been trained to crack the weight. And I'll tell you something else, if that had been an intruder, well, that lad's been an army, you know. Come in, it's only workers. Hi. My word, you're an early bird. Yeah. Well, there's tea in pot. I brewed it not ten minutes since, for Alec and Bet. He's gone with her to Stella Rigby's, and then she and Stella are off on this health farm stunt. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll indulge then. Won't you join me? Oh, best not. I've got all this, and then it's my day for upstairs. I wish you would. I'd love to, but Alec could be back any minute. Oh, we'll have gone with them to the station, you can bet your life. Mm. Um, look, Sandra, I've, um, I've got something that I want to say, and uh, I can't just blurt it out while you... On the wing, so to speak. Oh, go on then, I'll be a devil. <sighs> oh, ta. Right, what's up? It's Pete. Have you seen him? Have you got a message for me or something? Well, in a way. Oh, there's Pete all over going all around the houses. Oh, I know I've called him all the names under the sun, but I just thought he'd give me the go-by, no, drop so... me without so much as a word. Oh, it's somewhat silly, isn't it? Well... Don't tell me he dropped a washing machine on his foot. No, um... Look, Sandra, it's, uh, It's difficult to explain. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. He'll tell me in his own way. He can be very sweet. No, he won't tell you. He can't bear to. I can't. I wouldn't, but I work with you. Hey. I've been seeing Pete. He, uh, he gave me a lift home one night, and um, since then I've been seeing him. What? Well, a bit more than that, actually. He's, um, he's been coming back to my place. Oh my God. You were with him the night I called at your flat? Yeah, it was him. But I couldn't tell you then. So why tell me now? Because I feel I should. God, he, he made a pass at you and you took it. Oh, thanks a lot. The next Tarts convention, I'll get him to give you a medal. But I'll tell you something. You won't come between us. I can forgive him, because I love him. Yeah, well, the trouble is, Sandra, I think I do, too. And he says he loves me. Oh, my God. Oh, Sandra, look, it wasn't planned, you know. I, I haven't come here to crow or to say hands off. Look, I know what I've done's wrong. Pete knows he hasn't treated you. Oh, spare you me right. the drivel! It's not drivel, it's the truth. What else can I say? No. Worth tuppence. I am very sorry, Sandra. Leave me alone. Neighbours is cursing. She's not sent out a search party yet. I phoned her. Yeah, have you had anything to eat? I'll go to the chicken. No, no, I'm, I'm all right, Jenny. I'll manage. It's just a fit of the blues, you know. Things piling up. I've had a man die on me, and that were bad. But when they choke you, when you try everything you know, when you grovel, and they still choke you. Hey, now come on, you weren't that bad. Well, you could have fooled me. I went looking my best. <laughs> Tried everything I knew, every argument, even you. Oh, no, what a sick. performance. Tears, quavering voice, every bloody thing bar swooning. Till there were no left but to crawl away. Pride in tatters. Mascara all over the shop. All the stuff about feelings and loyalty and obligations. All the stuff about you. Damage. Heartbreak. All useless. 
even the groveling. No. Oh, yes. And then there was this voice pleading, don't reject me. Please don't reject me. My voice. And through it all, he hardly batted an eyelid. His face were like stone. Look, Peter, I had to tell her. I mean, people were talking. She'd have found out. We'd have looked a right pair. Yeah, maybe. What a mess. No, it was a mess, but it's sorted now, isn't it? Nothing to be ashamed of. Haven't we? Well, I know it. You bit me like a ton of bricks. How to do, young man? How's the domestic appliance business? Oh, it's fine. Good. What we need is robots, you know. Bar persons and cleaning staff you can turn on like dishwashers. Then we could all get on with we love lives. Oh, there you go. Oh, dear. Look, take a seat. I mean, he'll be on the phone or something soon. I'll get five minutes. I'm telling you, did it standing on my head? Had me to Sonny, went through my martial arts repertoire. Had a go at cracking his safe. If he wants me to stand guard again tonight, I'll have it sussed. He might come back, find me and his brass of optic. Smartish like. I thought you had a bird in. I would have done it your age. Mind you, there is a theory in uh, certain quarters, uh, a fanciful notion that uh, Terence here took the said motor out on a joyride. A uh, joyride which included some gents' domicile, where there was this behaviour of a labrucious nature with the aforesaid gents' lawful spouse. That therefore means this rather novel version of a solicitor's letter was alluding to uh, our mutual friend's monkey tricks rather than Baldwin's. That's careless talk, Curly. I'd say watch it. Only you're so long-winded, nobody understands a blind word you're talking about. All right, boss. Did the business last night, didn't I? It's on the ball, wasn't I? Yeah, I was very impressed. See you this after, then. Right eye, bushy tail, and ready for action. Yeah, in the meantime, keep your eyes skinned. You never know with these nutters. You see, you don't make a move without me. I've got him eating out my hand. You'll have me packing a gun next. You keep feeding his paranoia, and you'll be on danger money next. <laughs> You're a jammy beggar. What are you? I'm the lad that fell in the muck heap and come out smelling of roses. <laughs> well, it's just the one week, Mrs. Stubbs. And I must say, a very prompt pair. We could do with more customers like you. Anything to be popular. <laughs> well, when money's tight, you can't afford to run bills up. Um, believe me, I know what it's like to be on your own. But now that I'm not, I'm recommending marriage to everybody. <laughs> I'm glad you're suited. Oh, we yeah. are, Derek and me, amazingly so. Oh, by the way, I hear you've kicked and you've got a nice young man in the offing. Oh, hello. Hiya. How are you feeling, lover? Sandbagged. Oh, Sandra. You're a nice girl. You'll find somebody. I had. But that two-faced little trollop wasted oh, no time, now did she? steady on. I mean, Gloria's ever so upset, love, and so's Pete. How do you know? Have you seen him? Yeah, in the robe as well. He was there when I left. Oh, is he? He's with her, I suppose. How cosy. Well, look, now, don't. Can I have my hand back, please? Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Sure. Well, I never. How strange. Yeah, well, Gloria's pinched her fella. Oh. She was ever so fond of him. Anyway, I'm here for Alec. He wants a packet of his favourite cough sweets. Got a bit oh. of a tickle. That's lovely. Tardy. Oh, Mr. Hunter, home from the hill. <laughs> you fool. My dearest. Hello, Betty. Hello. Well, here fit then. Quick dart around the highways and byways. Launch at some bijou hostelry. I'm sorry, Derek. I can't read us not well, so I'm left holding the fort again. Oh. Well, nil desperandum. I'll nip smartly upstairs and prepare a repast fit for a princess. <laughs> Beans on toast. Oh, marvellous. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> yes. Health Farm, Brett Lynch. Sounds like a right posh do. Hey, it's not cheap. Oh, I don't know. Could be a national health farm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here, I've heard they stick your feet in Carmock and whip you with birch twigs. No, you've got it wrong, Don. That's what Brett had to do before you can get the brass out of Alec. <laughs> I thought I heard a few weird cries in the night. <laughs> hey, oh, this could be nasty. Where's Pete? He went back to work. Oh, you packed him up, did you? Before he could see me? No, of course I didn't. Not much. You're a proper little schemer, aren't you? Right snake in the grass. Once your hooks are in there, in, aren't they? Now, ladies, just remember your manners. It's not Dodge City. It's all right, Alec. There'll be no trouble. Well, not from me. Look, Sandra, these things happen. You smug little bitch. Hey, now, oh, be it! Let me go! Let me do your proper! 
got to look at her, but I wouldn't melt. Well, you're not going to smile your way out of this, you mealy mouth little tart. <laughs> Bloody bank managers. So he said. He said it would be different if you owned your own place. As it is, you're asking for an unsecured loan. Well, I'm not going to say I told you so. Not a tactful silence was indicated. Only I did warn you. Mm. Well, at least we had a good meal anyway. I'll go out with you if you want. Not that desperate for money. I wouldn't mind, but the business is doing so well, that's why I was absolutely sure he'd give it to me. Are we, uh, carrying along to plan, then? Back to your place? Or aren't you in the mood? I'm always in the mood. we got to salvage something from today. Who is it? Can't you manage for five minutes? Oh, it's you. Tiger Stubbs. Well, if you're looking for Gloria to scrag again, she's gone home. Probably to put her hair in curlers after that beer rinse you gave her. Which reminds me, you owe me the price of a pint. Take it out of your wages. And get one thing straight, I'm not here to crawl. Well, I don't know why you bothered coming then, cos no short of crawling's gonna save you. Look, I gave you every chance. I said, come into the back, sort it out, civilised, but no. You storm off, and what was I told I was? A tin pot little nobody. Oh, I didn't mean that. I lost my rag. I'm out against you. Look, have I still got my job? Look, I'm sorry, Petal. I can't have my bar staff brawling. I'm trying to run a respectable house. Fair enough. Must I work notice? I think we can forget notice. Either way. Well, the place still needs cleaning. I'm willing to stay on till you find a replacement. No, come on. Grow up with you and glory at hammer and tongues cleaning it and need flaming rebuilding. Ah, no, you're right, it would, because I'm still gunning for her. Yes, well, that's your business. I've got to think about my fixtures and fittings. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like you off the premises. You'll explain to Bet. Oh, I shall get a full report. Just one other thing. No encores, no curtain calls. This is positively your last appearance, either working or something. I don't want you in the pub again. <laughs> hey, you? You're putting some hours in, aren't you, love? Thought after last night you'd have had a day off. Boss can't manage without me, can he? Oh, it makes you wonder how we survived all these years, doesn't it? Well, if he's what they call the enterprise culture, I'd say forget it. Do you know you get on me with you, pair? Knock, 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 just because lad wants to get out. Oh, excuse us, we'll give him a clap next time he appears. Hey, no clapping here, it's a very old building. <laughs> Any road, uh, your limo's looking great now. I'll give it a good doom with a chamois, what with a respray. Oh, and uh, here's your cigars, plus uh, some change from the five you give me. Now, how about tonight? I mean, if you still think there's a threat, I'm game. No, that's OK now, panic over. In fact, it was over yesterday, but, uh, well, I have these little whims. Well, you pay me wages. I only took the one phone call, you know. Latest girlfriend. Oh, I well, know it's rumoured I've got a string of them, but not anymore, just the one. <laughs> Here, do you know what she told me? Surprise, surprise. Her old man's working in foreign parts. My, oh my. The plot thickens, eh? Who do you think he is, then, eh? The phantom sign writer. A joker, I say, with uh, not better to do. Agreed. A lad like you, before I gave you the big break. Maybe. Well, now to kick the headlights in and all. I've been very impressed these last few days. And look at last night. Could I catch a skiving? Well, I'm chuffed to do it. I mean, your interests are mine. I'm glad you see it that way. That's great. I suppose it's driving my motor, eh? Good job we don't take the same shirt size, well, innit? it gives me something to aim at. And you're getting there, believe you me. Foresight, coolness under pressure, and when it comes to the blarney, you beat Terry Wogan. Well, I'm not bragging, but uh, I do think I am cut out for this game. You've only got one fault. Do you know what that is? Memory. Do you reckon? Yeah. I'll give you an instance. This uh, married bird you've been knocking off, the one you took out in my car, nice little number, 
Husband's an aerosol freak. Oh, nice one, son. Nearly had me fooled. Except there's one vital little thing that you forgot. I don't know what you're on about. You forgot the speedo. I'm lost. Oh, come on, son. You'll have me doubting my own judgment. You'll have me thinking that you think I'm stupid. Hang on, Mr. Baldwin. If I'm getting your drift right, you're saying that I've had a bird out in your motor. There you are. Sharp as a razor. Well, it's cobblers. I mean, the mileage proves that. There wasn't one mile put on that clock while he was in London. Naturally, because you had the speedo off. Kids stuffed to a bloke with your flair. No, I like it. You can go straight to the top of the class. It's just a, well, it's a pity about your memory, though. That's when your memory let you down. I don't see how. <laughs> you had the speedo cable off. But you were such a Charlie, you forgot to put it back on again. What the hell is like forget to put... Goodbye, Terry. Oh, Mike. Your money will be in the post list, but they charge me for the respray. How do you find out about that bird? Who shot me? No one shopped you. Call it routine guesswork. All that tripe. The top of the class and all that. What was the point of that? The point was you bought it. Never try and kid a kidder, son. Mike, have a heart. It was only a lark. My mum thinks I'm due for promotion. I said goodbye, Terry. Oh, good afternoon. It's uh, Mike Baldwin here. Listen, uh, do you still have that blonde driver on your books? I could always move back in with you again, I suppose. What do you reckon? Oh, I'm not sure. Too tame for you, would it be, eh? Too domestic? Might be. No. Just thought I'd ask. I'm well suited. And I think you are, too. Huh? But then, of course, uh, there's your bank manager, isn't there? Eh? Well, I gather that he's not too keen on your address. So? So. If we were living together, everything joint, he might see things differently. That's not why I asked, you know. Of course it isn't. It's just as well, really. I'd have to say no. You see, uh, I was fetched up to be careful with brass. I bet you were. Wouldn't mind you going house with the housekeeping, though. As long as that's all it is. I'll bear that in mind. Good night, then. I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a ring. Hey, do you want me to give you a lift back? Oh, let's keep it discreet. Mm. Don't worry. You'll get that money somehow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Do you know now? It's the last thing I wanted. She kept my mouth shut now. Oh, no, don't be downhearted. You couldn't have worked out better if you'd have planned it, could it? No, that's what people are thinking. Well, they're bound to, aren't they? Yeah. Sandra's going through the door. You're stood there holding flaming hands with a button friend. Give her a Roger. You are lucky even I'm speaking to you because you'll get short shift from Betty. Don't go on, rub it in. Is this a private punch-up for can I be referee? I should think you've done enough. Eh? What happened was between me and Sandra, there was no need for a sacking. Oh, what pubs have you worked in? Or else for supping, not christening for with. Yeah, but it was me who was christened, wasn't it, have I complained? All right, no, look, the subject has been dealt with. You've not been fair, Alec. This isn't the way Bet would have handled it. I think you ought to reinstate Sandra. Oh, I. And make these ale throwing sessions a regular feature, like. Be serious. I mean, I'm I'm deadly <laughs> serious. You're like a red rag to Sandra. She's after blood, and I don't want it spilt on my floor. There'll be no fighting. Oh, oh you're going to give this Pete up, are you? No, I'm not. Oh, there you are, then. It's got to be one of you. Right. We best make it me, then. Oh, come on. I'm not chopping and changing, Gloria. Look, Alec. Sandra's already lost a bloke through me. I'm not having her losing a job and all. She needs the money, Alec. All right, all right. The subject is closed. If you don't reinstate Sandra, I'm leaving now. But don't be so silly, Glow. We're short staffed as it is. I mean it, Alec. Either you reinstate Sandra or I'm off. Look, I'll, I'll have to speak to Bet. You didn't speak to Bet when you sacked Sandra. How do you know I didn't? Because Bet wouldn't have been so bloody one eyed. Look. Just forget it. 
going. Hey, hang on a minute. I, I, I haven't said I won't reconsider. Will you please yourself? I'm going, Alec. I can't stay in. Not after what's happened. And if you've got a conscience, you'll see what's right. Look, hang on. You, you can't do this, though. I mean, where's my notice? Ask Sandra. Bye. Can, can I be blamed? I mean, is it my fault? Or any bet might have something to say about it. Losing one of the girls could be an accident. Two of them. Worth a slap wrist. Joanne, she might not have fixed anything up. You don't know Joanne. She's like lightning. She swore an undying love before the night set. Hey, Jen. Pull the other one. I don't believe there was a lad on that bus. Honest. Look, I'm all right, you know. I can be left for an hour without being suicidal. There you are. That'll be Joanne now. I told her I was stopping in. Hey, listen. Don't have her pulling a chair up. An evening with Joanne had just put the tin hat on it. Rita, initiate. Go through. Thanks. Can I come back? Of course you can. Thanks. Oh, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home. Thanks, love. Classic Coronation Street will be back on Monday at the same time. And don't forget that there's the omnibus edition on Sunday afternoons at 3. Up next today on Plus, comedy with watching.